the biggest shock will be if people found out that the clock that they're using and everything else is based on the number 19. Then soon you'll think, these people have gone too far. The entire calendar that we're told is the solar calendar is based on the number 19. Did you know this? Hi, Raphael, what's new? That's the first thing. Yeah, I never know how to answer that question. I guess life goes on and hopefully more deception is being revealed. <laughs> ah, life doesn't go on for some people. Um, I mean, in a happy part. way, unfortunately. Yes, so um, I, I wish everybody good luck. Anybody who's listening in who's having a hard time. Yes. Anyway, I've just... Um, published a new book. It's called Secrets of the Kabbalah. Yes. Have you received the front cover? Yes. Yes. Um, the thing is, um, you know, in the Kabbalah, um, what do you call it? Yes. Um, one of the major diagrams, it's like um, one of the major diagrams is known as the Tree of Life. Yes. Um, they use it in many secret societies, secret organizations. Yes. And um, what do you call it? You can read, um, what do you call it? Many of these organizations, yes, um, they tell their members to study it. Now, um, Raphael, you've got a mobile phone, yes? Indeed. Yes. So now the thing is, um, ma um, many people have got a mobile phone, but now the thing is, when we um, um, have, have a look at it, um, if we just have a look at the basic interior, of a mobile phone, the thing is, it takes you time to um, study it and understand it. Yes, um, uh, of course, many people will say, hey, I know it. Yes, that's because um, it's not hidden, it's not a secret. Yes, so um, um, things like that are very easy to understand. But you know how the entire system works and everything as you go deeper, yes, it becomes a lot more difficult to understand you've got to be an expert um, but um have a look at this um, will you be able to understand what's there yes or no i've just sent you a new picture have you received it yes since i haven't studied microelectronics i wouldn't just i mean at least not yes in detail no no, no. Yes. yeah let's talk let's talk same like the peasants do <laughs> no, well, I mean, I can I can tell you there's a camera. I can tell you there's a few chiplets because I have basic knowledge and some transistors okay. or resistances. Okay, but, but I can't um, explain but, you how but it works exactly. Many people, like many people, have done some diagrams to make things easier. Yes, but even then, some people are going to be asking, "What is power AMP or 2100 MHz?" Of course. And then they'll say, "What what is MLC Movinant or One Nand plus Mobile DDR?" Yes. And then what's inside it's that? It's a lot of cryptic yes. lingo, of course. Yeah. And of course, if you go one yes. level deeper, it's even usually more complex to understand or takes. So a now my yeah. new book, my new book focuses on the tree of life in the Kabbalah. So now what many people don't know is that they turn on and tell you that the tree of life is to describe what you call it. Yes, is to describe. Um, let me see. The, the, there's so much of it um, are, are online and many people are baffled by it and um, they're spending thousands of dollars just to understand it. Yeah, people are spending thousands of dollars. There's um, classes you can go to in my city um, just per class, um, $100 per class. Oh, yes. Yeah. 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 I'm sure I'm sure you probably already know. So um, the thing is, um, uh, um, you know, these kind of things, there's um, many lodges, oriental lodges or different societies. They have these things they put Hebrew letters on. Many people, uh, yeah. So the thing is, it, it takes you a long time, especially when there's thousands of pages to study. Unless um, uh, uh, if, you've got, uh, if you're an expert, it takes a long time and you have to know a lot about the history. So therefore, my new book goes through this. Oh, it's a little expensive as well. Yes. Um, normally, I, I, I've written 20 books before this book, and normally every book, when I uh, um, published it, I gave it free for um, several months. This is the first book I didn't give free. 
And um, the thing is, yes, it, it does cost thousands of dollars. And let me just show you an example. Um, there's two sides. Um, this focuses on the Kabbalah. There's two sides of the Kabbalah. One side is to focus on how to become a god. You won't believe it, but that's one side. And the other side of the Kabbalah is the magical side. Yes, it's to do with magic. Yes, or sorcery, or right. to do with witchcraft. Yes, but um, but but the theoretical side is how to become a god, and then um, um, the magical side is this so-called god carries out his actions, which people say, oh, we can see through it. So um, many people know it's magic because he doesn't really become a god. Yes, or he thinks he becomes a god, and um, that depends. I'll go through it in a minute. I was just going to show you something. Uh, um, what do you call it? Yes. Ah, yes. Um, I'm just typing in just randomly. Yes, um, what do you call it? Kabbalah classes cost. Yeah, so um, what do you call it? Here is, um, what do you call it? You know, um, in um, England, £195 per month or, you know, $250 or something per month. Yes. And even then, many people come back and they say, I didn't understand the thing. They don't. And many people don't because these classes aren't designed to teach you anything. And then there's hundreds of books about the Kabbalah and um, um, secret organizations all over the world. Hundreds of books. Yes. And um, the thing is, um, you know, even after then, would you call it? Yes. There's people challenging uh, uh, um, everybody and things like this and people get angry and um, things like this. Um, you know, like um, you could see this. Um, here is some website. Somebody just for a joke say, so Rasta. Tell me, <laughs> uh, what is this or what is that? Yes, what is Jehovah? What is Elohim? What is Eloha? What is Me Melahim? What is Shaddai? What is Sherebim? Yes, well, you know, things like this. What is Adonai? What is Malkut? Yeah, what is that? So what they've done, um, that's one. So the thing is, um, the thing is why I said um, how to become a God, because many people don't know. Yes, they don't admit this. But the one of the biggest secrets of the Kabbalah is, yes, why it became popular and um, why many people think it helps them to make money and things like this. It's because it teaches you certain things of how to become a god. That's why they put a human on there, because they say God created man in his image. That is the basic thing in... Um, um, uh, um, many religions that a man can be God. Hinduism, Buddhism. Yes, um, of course, they will turn around and say, um, you know, we have a different system, but it's basically a Kabbalistic teaching. Christianity, Judaism, God made man in his image. So when you look at your image, it's a man. So therefore, God is a man, according to the Kabbalah and Kabbalistic teachings mm -hmm. in these Kabbalistic religions. So you mean, now, wait, wait, just so I understand. Would no, it... no, I mean, everybody, uh, open up the Bible. Please don't say it's me. No, it's no, no. not me. I, I understand. Yeah. I understand that part. Yeah. And I know the, the term that you're using. I just want to understand in this case, would you mean, that, uh, uh, do you mean it in a way that they would infer that God is a personality or is like a human, let's say? Is that what you mean? Ah. So the thing is, if you want to know further details, what people can do is they could spend hundreds of dollars, thousands going to classes. They can do it. They're welcome. Yes. You've asked a question. Yes. That many people want to know. Many people are asking. <coughs> and um, the thing is, there's hundreds of books, hundreds of websites, everything. And um, they just waste your time hours after hours and years after years. And you can't get to the bottom of this. Yes. So what I've done is in my book. Yes. And you know how I wrote my books and many people have read my books. I put everything down simply so that people can check it and that they can know. Oh, don't think that um, don't think. Um, let me just um, remind you. Yes. Um, what do you call it? Yes. Um, about uh, um, uh, we have to um, involve family in subjects like this. We can't ignore family members. Yes. Don't think that when the Kabbalah was published, Daddy, yes, let me just uh, <laughs> remind everybody, yes, um, you know, to everybody, um, if you're just um, having a nice day, um, just um, listening in, please look at the screen right now, yes, and um, please take a good look, here is Daddy, he's waving at you all, oh, by the way, 
he's not just that he declared himself his ancestors other popes declared themselves the lord god the pope <coughs> that's what they declared themselves that's because they thought they were god or they to them they are god by the way so many people are saying who are the illuminati who do they think they are how can they make these laws how come they don't care what's going on how could they just invade iraq without whatever how could they ignore all the protests anti-war protests for gaza iraq this that um you know afghanistan yes and why are they targeting the muslim countries at the moment believe it or not yes most people won't like to hear this i don't care i'm just stating something that's in history yes that um what do you call it every religion has got something linked to a man who is a god god created man in his image so even if christian christians and jews turn around and say god is not a man yes um don't worry you can open up the bible and the kabbalah books and you will see that god created adam in his image yeah, and God's image is that God was actually a man, according to the Bible. Do you know this? Because all so religions... That's why, Daddy, that's why Daddy declared, you know... Yes, yes um, because you know, all religions, except whatever the original religion or system religion, was... It's not a religion, it's a fact. It, wait, it keep the image of your dad there, yes? And my dad and everybody, our father and your father. Yes, I'm going back to my father and to your father, Christ said according to according to these gospels yeah people believe these things so now the thing is my book my book goes through this not only that my book goes through something else yes and um, there's many people who are going to be saying ah there's amazing mathematical patterns in the bible yes yeah amazing maths gematria this that in hebrew whatever people are just going to go through it and then they're um they're just going to show you that there's amazing things so this book will go through the amazing maths and explain the secret just like that because you are going to find amazing maths and there's thousands of pages it is going to drive you insane oh i'm lucky i started studying this maybe when i was 12 or 13 so by the time uh, by the time I was 20, I figured it out if it's true or if it's a scam. Oh, in the same way, um, now the Islamists are claiming that there is a 19 code and other yes. mathematical codes in the Quran. Yes. So now in the Quran, too, they found this amazing mathematical facts. Yes. And all these other things. So some people are going to say, Ah, this is the proof that the Bible is the word of God or the Quran is the word of God, etc. Yes. Now, there was many people, um, you know, who didn't like it in America. Yes. Uh, many of these people who believed these stories and they still do that. They think there is some amazing mathematical code in the Quran. Yes. Well, the thing is, this new book goes through it and it shows that in the letters and everything, if there is a mathematical code or if there is not. And then this code, um, this new book will explain, yes, who these people are or who the gods are, or if there is more than one God. Yes, um, if they're really gods or if they're really not, and what is the Kabbalah all about? Now, the thing is people can spend hundreds of dollars. Now, if somebody's going to turn around to me and say, hey, it's a rip off, he's whatever, he's got the price. By the way, my, my mother, my father, they paid thousands of dollars. This is the first time I'm going to say it in public. When I was about 15 years old, I wanted to order many of these strange books from the Middle Ages. When I was 15, it was 19, 1988, 89, 1991, around that time. I remember I was crazy that I wanted to know all these books about the Kabbalah and other things. I'm going to admit this now, first time. I was stealing money of my parents to order books that um, that nobody wanted. And um, in them days, there was no internet. You had to go to specialist bookshops. It, sometimes it took like four or five months or just for the books to arrive that I wanted to go through this stuff. It cost a lot of money. Yes. Then, um, so the thing is, what do you call it? Yes. Um, you know, if I'm charging, it costs me so much. Okay. If you don't want it, go out there and carry on wondering. And then carry on wondering, 
Yes. Why these people are using 19, this 19, that. Shall I show you how much of a joke this 19 is? Uh, last time we mentioned the printing press and everything. You're just going to start laughing. You're going to think this has gone too far. These people are too good. Yeah. Now, the thing is, you are not going to understand these things unless if you know what the 19 and the 33 stand for. Now, in this book, I've given a summary explaining what the 19 and the 33 is. Yes. I've, I've given it in a summary way. Uh, actually, the truth is I was going to charge a lot more for this book, a lot, lot more. And I was going to divide the information because I know, I know most people don't have this information. Well, to be perfectly honest with you, that was the very first thing, even ever since you started presenting anything at all. Nobody As, knew uh, no, the info, not, anybody not, who's not read my that. book. What I want to say Please is comment. you could have started Wait. 100 years ago with splitting up the information and charging a whole lot because there's people and teachers and authors that teach maybe a fraction of what you have shown only in the past I, years for free. You know what? And they are charging you immense amounts what? for 100 the types of courses. The information in my books, <laughs> the information in my books, some people have actually read them. Please kindly comment on this video. Actually do it. Yes, I challenge anybody. Yes, apart from some of the historical facts, yes, that P Professor Fomenko mentioned, the rest of it, nobody ever knew. And the reason why I knew the mathematics was because I knew the Kabbalah very well. I understood this secret. That's how I knew. That's how I knew. Yes. <clears throat> Otherwise, nobody knew. Even you know that nobody in the world knew half this information. And then if anybody challenged me, I always came back and... Uh, so, I didn't mean to be abusive, but when I turn around and call people, hey, these dogs or these toilet boys, I did it because if somebody's going to read a comment, I know people are spending hundreds of dollars, thousands of dollars. They're worried why they're alive. They're worried where they're going to go when they die. People are terrified. It is not a joke. You see? So that's why um, the thing is, at first I was just, I thought, uh, wrote a bit about history, and then I thought I'll put down the invention of the Hebrew language, it was, and it was only perfected in the 20th century. Then I saw Islamists celebrating, almost like, hey, that means that Arabic is divine. So that's when I thought, huh, I'll end their fantasy and I will reveal certain things about Arabic. Oh, by the way, this book goes even deeper about the origin of the current Arabic language and alphabet in the entire Middle East. By the way, this book does it, yes? So um, I'll, I'll just show you something, how much they falsified history. It's because so many people will say, hey, what do you call it? I've got manuscripts, this, that, everything. You know what I mean? My grandparents left Bibles that say 1755, 1855. Don't worry, in this video, I'm going to prove beyond a reasonable doubt those dates are a lie. It's a lie. It's a lie. It's a lie. Yes. Now, for example, let's have a look at all the crappy history that they're giving. But look at this, even when you back in Roman times, yes, you're going to think this is scary. Yes, for example, 5th century, you could read it. What is this? What is it known as? Yes, so this is it. one of the oldest and most important Virgilian manuscripts. This is the Virgilius Romanus, also known as the Roman Virgil, a 5th century illustrated manuscript of the works of Virgil. Mm -hmm. Yes, there you go. So now the, the thing is, when one has a look, yes, read the measurements. The measurements are, it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is 332 by 323 yeah. millimeters with yeah. 309 vellum folios. Ah. Well, anyway, it was written in rustic capitals with what? 18 lines per page. Ah, okay, now go to the next manuscript. And um, the next paragraph, the manuscript has how many? The manuscript has? Yes, the manuscript has 19 surviving illustrations. Ah, it's got 19 surviving illustrations. And then anybody who understands the printing industry will notice they are telling us that this is, you know, basically 2000 years old and the ancient Romans wrote like this and it's actually in printed writing ready for the printing press and it's 18 lines per page but you know what yes let's have a look um how many real lines there are on the on the page because um 
they don't tell you this. Um, including the top line, yes. Um, how many lines per page would there be, Raphael? Well, 18 plus 1 would be 19. Makes how many? 19, yes. Uh, how many copies of this do we have? I'll have to check on the page. Um, you just read it, you know, um, how many surviving well, illustrations? The illustrations, ni 19 illustrations in the manuscript, yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, how very convenient. Yes. And the thing is, when we look for this person called Vigil, yes, um, when did this Vigil die? What year did he die, Raphael? In 19, 19 before Christ. Mm -hmm. 19 BC. Uh, it's, by the way, we don't have uh, Vigil or Virgil. Yes, we don't have many Roman manuscripts. There's not many. So the thing is now, um, let's have a look. Yes, just in case somebody's going to say, oh, he's trying to say 18 plus the title makes 19. No, that makes 18. I got ready for these idiots. Yeah, don't worry. So um, I want you to read it yourself. Um, um, what do you call it? Virgil's partition of his opening invocation into how many lines? Into 19 lines. Are you sure? Maybe it says 20 there, Raphael. Well, that's only I, what, I, what Ki Imoch from eScholarship.org says, at least. So he says 19. So lines. now there is another thing. So now all these Roman poetry and everything that they say we've got from 2,000 years ago that they mysteriously found during the Renaissance that were missing for 1,000 years, all of this poetry, it doesn't matter who wrote it, how many lines are there? is there normally in the poetry in the columns? There is 15 to 19 lines to the column. Are you sure it doesn't say 20? Okay, read the rest of the sentence I'm pretty sure to the it column. Says, it says 19, so 15 to 19 lines to the column and says that this was, quote, a format often found in the early Roman period for poetry. Yeah, the early period is we're going back now 3,000 years. So they are telling us, um, what do you call it, yes? It's all 19. So if anybody is going to tell me the Roman Empire existed, we got the evidence. It's all forgeries. They invented everything during and after the Renaissance, as I've declared in my books. Now, what do you call it? We've got the documents known as the Aeneid or uh, Aeneid or however you wish to pronounce it by Vigil. Yes. When did he write this document? It was written oh, by the Roman. You know, Ten thousand lines. When did he write it? And he wrote it between by? twenty-nine and again nineteen BC. So he completed it by what year? Nineteen BC. Are you sure it doesn't say twenty? Maybe you need your glasses. Yes, I have them, and it says nineteen. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, there's something wrong here. So we've got all these other things that they found from the Roman Empire. You know that they're saying that there's Plotus, ancient Plotus. Yes. So um, um, when he did his writings, how many lines per page? Again, normally? 19 lines to the page. Are you sure it's 19 lines? Yeah. Yes. And why is Plotus very important? Yes. Um, you can read this. And um, it's important because read from the second line, his comedies, yeah, are? His comedies are the earliest Latin literary works to have survived in their entirety. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. And how many lines is there per, um, per column for his comedy or poetry or whatever? Well, 19 or lines. Right? 19 lines. Ah, mm -hmm. 19 lines. Yes. So, so the thing is, now many people are asking, what is this 19? So I've been showing all this all this time. Yes. Yeah. And um, the thing is, if so, if some of these monkeys and dogs want to comment, did they th did they think that it took me hours to prepare what I'm going to be saying in the video? It took me hours to prepare how to present it to the public to make it clear. Do they even know this? Did they uh, did they even know it took me years to study these things and it cost me so much? Yes. There you go. So if some of these people are going to say this book is expensive, but it explains the 33rd degree clearly. It totally explains the 33rd degree clearly of what it is and what is 19 
and um, what is this? Why was why was um, Daddy called the Lord God the Pope? Yes, and um, how Daddy became God? Yes, and um, how God became man, and all these things, and where these ideas come from, and it goes through these things. And um, not only that, um, in this book, I go through. Um, um, in this book, I go through and explain it um, in the Tree of Life, um, what do you call it, yes? For the Kabbalah, they have a similar thing in Eastern mysticism, whereby they turn around and say, there's many schools of this. People are paying hundreds of euros for this. It's their life. They can do what they want, yes? So what? Uh, so um, the thing is, um, you know, um, I'm, I'm sure you've heard of it before, in, uh, um, Indian mysticism and things like this, yes? Sure. Mm -hmm. So there's uh, many people who are studying the chakras on the tree of life. Yeah, so you, you can find the chakras and things like this. People are paying for these things. Now, the, the other part, the Zohar side, um, what do you call it? Yes, for example, in English, we say Zohar, but you're German. You could confirm it. They say Zohar with the letter S. Yes, you they, know this. They would, yes? they would pronounce it like that, most likely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ah, oh, yes, yes. In, exactly in the same way that the Quran does, Arabic, Germanic, yes, by the way, so the Quran calls it Sahar, yes, so the thing is, um, there's many of these things and people cannot figure it out, and what are angel numbers, and all these other things, and yoga, and Kabbalah, you know, people are studying all these things, people are paying for these things, so the thing is, um, it, it's something that, um, you know, I gave 20 books free, at the time of release, when they were released um, in the last five years, this is the first one. And it explains something that people don't know. Yes, nobody knew about this 19 scam. Yes, um, of course, many people are going to be saying, oh, it's just there naturally in the Roman history. Yes, <laughs> sure it is. Yes. Um, what do you call it? Yes. But um, 19 lines to a page, it just gives it away. Yes, and um, for example, if people are going to be saying, um, you know, have I actually looked at the manuscripts? Yes, um, you could even find many of the first few printed manuscripts during the Renaissance. Many of them, many of them weren't 19 lines, but a lot of them that were originally printed, let's say this one they claim it's 1738. Yes, what do you call it? How many lines to a page? 19 the, lines to a page. Mm -hmm. yeah, this is famous. Mm -hmm. That this is the Psalterium or the Zalta. Yeah. How many lines did you say? 19, yes. Mm -hmm. Are you sure? Have you got your glasses on? <laughs> yes, indeed. Ah, sometimes I worry, Raphael. You know, many of the viewers, uh, maybe you're lying on their behalf because they've had enough of David showing these 19s. So here people could count the number of lines themselves. Yes. So notice the writing is big on the printing. Have you noticed? It's very big. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so the thing is, so the thing is, my new book goes through these things and explains what's um, going on in these things. Yes. You see. Um, so that's what the um, new book is basically about. Yes. So if anybody's interested, um, you know, that new book is, it explains many of these things. It goes through the, it goes through the history of the Kabbalah where the Kabbalah came from. Yes, I'm talking about the Kabbalah, the tree of life side this book focuses on. It doesn't focus on the on the um, uh, uh, magical side, the sorcery side. This book goes through the mathematical codes and explains it in simple layman's terms so that people, by the time somebody's read the book, they will know, ah, at last I know what is the 33rd degree. It doesn't matter if it's a Hindu secret society or a communist secret society or a Western Masonic secret society or um, one of these Sufi secret societies, they will know what the 33rd degree is and they will understand why they are using 19. You see? You see? Mm -hmm. Yes? That's what this book is about. Okay. So now let's continue from where we left off last time. And what where we left off last time, <clears throat> we didn't have enough time to go through it was it was about the printing press yes, yes. and we showed um what do you call it yes a reminder to the to um the people who are watching because many people of course um 
you know, um, they probably didn't do any further research. They left crazy comments and things, to, um, some people. And then um, the thing is, um, you know, I don't know what to say. But anyway, they'll have to watch that previous video to understand things. Now, the thing is, when we do our printing today, uh, well, starting uh, uh, around after the Second World War, um, many of these machines became popular, known as typewriters. So typewriters could type small letters, yes? And you didn't need to put it by hand, yes? You can see, yes? Yes. So um, um, you didn't need to type it by hand, do it by hand. But before then, let me just show you the difficulty of how printing was done. And most people don't realize this. Yes. What they used to do is they used to have all the letters seem like a nail. Yes. Not a nail, but um, a metal rod. And um, it, it's a rod. And you had to get it together. And then with your hands, you had to put every sentence. This is what they're telling us into a block of wood, into a straight line. And you had to do it backwards. By the way, you should know all the characters backwards. Yes, and you had to place them together. How long is it going to take you, Raphael? Like, for example, let's say they're telling us this is a newspaper from um, what date? Um, just and they're telling us they had all these newspapers in them. In um, this is 1861. They're going to show you this is 1861. Yes, yeah, Civil War newspaper. <laughs> uh, many people will believe this. Yes. Oh, Raphael. Yes. Um, why should I share this knowledge with people who are being pathetic? Yeah, I get hundreds of um, crazy messages, people who don't know something and then they find something new, then they realize, ah, I was wrong. Why don't they just go and study things themselves? By the way, this is a Civil War newspaper from 1861. So um, how long do you think it's going to take them to um, put together the words for this newspaper? Oh, I mean, when I saw this, because I was just checking the typewriter, was officially in there's no typewriter at the time no, yeah, You've got no, to do it i'm just saying i was just checking officially on wikipedia it says typewriter first commercial typewriters were introduced in 1874 so that would still at least be you know 10 years 13 years after this is supposedly was printed and if i would have to think about and have to put the letters by hand i would spend a whole day basically <laughs> to be able to print it so i don't uh, know okay. yeah, how this would be so feasible. now um, the thing is they're showing us these newspapers and they're showing us hey most of them don't have spelling mistakes either okay um, you can check them out i sent you before um daily evening express somewhere in america united states gazette what year is this ha, look at this joke uh what date is this <laughs> 1815. 1815. Mm -hmm. 1815 what a joke and they're telling us they did this by hand. And I, I, can, I can read this. Um, let me just um, show you. And then uh, people, that's why they tell you that we've got the history and everything. Yeah, I've enlarged it. And they're telling us that when they were printing these in hundreds of cities around the world at the time. So now look at this. Loud and deep were the murmurs of old Wilson's friends against the authors of their disappointment. And the general feeling on the ground was that the veteran pedestrian has been harshly treated inasmuch as it was said he had given notice to the magistrates in general of his intention to walk on Blackheath and no objection had been made to it. Bolstein because the English language wasn't even properly standardized by then. That's and the other thing I was about to ask about, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and not only that, um, you know, there was so many people from everywhere in America who couldn't even speak English. All these village people who would have brought these garbage newspapers in every town and city throughout the United States and Europe. So then what they're showing us is that um, God knows how many hours, but they've got to put all the lines. You can't even do it with small letters. The letters that they show us when we go to a museum is the big letters and they've put the big letters until they put them together on a block. Now we demonstrated this last time, people can watch the other videos or read my books or what can I say? You know, I can't do anything. Yes, then they're telling us what you call it. Like for example, yes, um, yes. Um, they're telling us that they've printed lots of um, poetry ballad they call them or something to sing or to say 
God knows, right. poetry. And they're telling us there's a lot of these from the 19th century. And people were buying them like crazy. That's what they are telling us. But just looking at the size of the print, it's ridiculous. The size, yes, shows me that, um, hey, let's just go back, yes, to the Library of Congress. Yes, that um, from the time until the 1880s, read it yourself from Gutenberg till the 1880s letters of type needed to be individually cast in molds and put in order by hand backwards and in reverse order ah so the people who did this if they really did this yes now i will show you that they did print many books they did Now, the, the ones that we know that they printed, there's not many of them around. Yes. And how we know that they, they printed uh, many things is, um, for example, let me just send you examples of um, the books that they printed because you can see it. Yes. Um, here, look at this picture. Now, from this, um, yeah, many of them are forgeries of the dating, but this, they say, is the, is the, is the salt or Pazalta for Macclesfield, yes? Now, they probably falsified the dates and something, but one thing that we can know is that the printing was like this. Do you know why? It's because the letters were bigger and the pages were bigger in the books. You could, why were the letters bigger, Raphael? Can your brain figure it out? Well, it's easier to print. Yeah. Uh, easier to see the letters with your eyes yes yes because you've got to put them backwards and everything yes so the thing is um the but it other still doesn't mean that... but also it still looks printed so it still doesn't say anything uh, if this was made before Wait, or after no, a newspaper not the point. let's okay. not divert if the letters are bigger does it make this process easier definitely yes that's what i'm getting at so that then people can understand that when they put the letters there, it's because it's bigger letters, you can do it more easily. Like, for example, that's why you can go to a museum and um, with the bigger letters, it's easier. Now, the, now that what they are showing us is that we've got newspapers from, from the time of Napoleon Bonaparte. Yes, and it's so small and, and books with that type of writing and Bibles with such small writing. Yes. What is the only thing that you can assume? That they were uh, printed hey. afterwards. Yes. In the 20th century. That's why I turned around and declared that they were printed later because it's impossible. For example, maybe it's called the New York Times today. I'm not sure. You know, New York Tribune. That's what it was. And look at this. Yes. Um, what do you call it? Yes, June 16th, 1860. How the hell did they put these letters together backwards? How? Can somebody explain that to me? You see? Especially when they say that half of the people, um, um, what do you call it, spoke Germanic languages, or more than 70% of the speak people couldn't even speak English in the United States. More than 70, up to 80%, even more. And uh, most people had never been to school then. So who were they selling these things to? And how did they have this advanced English word that many of them, what do you call it? Yes, the dictionaries were only prepared in the late 19th century. How could that be possible when even in England, that the majority of people, yes, didn't go to school in 1860 and they couldn't read and write? Look at this. When she reached the half mile pole, Tolman had once more got pa patching down and in his stride, but seemingly hopelessly behind. They're using difficult words. Yes. Mm -hmm. Difficult words. And with the race gone, Tolman, however, seemed to think otherwise. And when his horse had cooled down to steadiness, who the hell is going to use words like that? Unless if, if it's for people who are very educated. Yeah. Yes. I'm, I'm talking about modern standards of education. Then it says, he roused him up to a steady rattling brush and the gap began to close. His pace drew on her so quickly that she seemed to come back to him. On, on he went, 
no no faltering no dwelling no serving no breaking but in all steadiness and the way let me just show you even the way the letters some of them are diagonal it looks like it was made yes with the new typing system that was put in in the new uh, uh, from the machines afterwards like when it says on on he went and it goes diagonally down because they were still using these type of machines um, printing machines and typewriters in the 1980s when I was a, when I was a kid. Well, that's yes. that's the other it, thing that no. I'm I'm wondering even if this would even have to mean that let's say all these older newspapers were printed in 18. 18... Okay. Not that's just what, not just that, but not only that it doesn't necessarily mean they were printed in the 1880s and backdated, but they could also because have they, even been printed they, a lot I'll, later. So that's because it looks they, pretty they modern. To later, me. I will explain to you why. It's like mobile phones. Everyone knows that the CIA and the KGB, that the, their um, agents had mobile phones in the 70s right. and the 80s. Yes. By the time it got to the public, it's now um, 50 years later. Yes. Uh, the public still doesn't have it. It's been 50 years. Uh, many people around the world don't have it. I'm not sure what the data is, but um, some people say it's a quarter, or some say half the world still doesn't have it. So now the thing is, what gives the game away? Yes, so that's why this book was very important that Napoleon did not exist. It goes through the, um, the history book they're saying, you know, and um, because you write history later. So they're saying within 20, 30 years, they wrote down the history of Napoleon Bonaparte. The entire history is 19. Yes, that anyone who goes through it, the history just doesn't match. Yes. And even with their fake codes and everything, that the history contradicts itself. It contradicts itself because, yes, they wrote it much later and they mathematically organized it. Yeah, same like when you're planning a wedding, you organize everything, how much money, what time, this, that. It, it involves mathematics. Yes. You know, when you organize a wedding, what time the guests come, how sure. many guests are going to sit here, how many will sit there, where the camera people are going to be, this, that. It's all to do with numbers. So the thing is, the way they organize the history, you can see that the numbers don't match and that and uh, they it's got 19 everywhere in the napoleon story he came to he did the coup d'etat on the 18th of brumaire he came to power on the 19th and he made his declaration of power on the 19th same like with the adolf hitler thing like let me just show you the scam of the adolf hitler thing many people know this but they can't figure it out yes look at this poster many people are showing this yes you know um allies we defeated the nazis then there's one herr von braun yeah yes from nazi germany he became one of the leaders of nasa and there he is with um you know john f kennedy so the thing is yes so the thing is i, I wrote a book about this to show that the entire history of the second world war has been falsified in some languages yeah it's called adolf hitler in the english language this book is called nazi germany Yes, yeah, so like, for example, um, that man that I mentioned who's from Nazi Germany, who is an alleged, they've got videos of him and um, pictures of him and other things that, um, what do you call it, he was one of the top Nazis. Now, the strange thing is, when you look at the strange thing, is that um, when you look at, the, when you watch some of these films from the 1940s, Yes, they used actors, but many of the most people couldn't speak English properly. They didn't have the current American accent. Nobody had the, you know, like, um, what's his name? Andreas, how he has his American accent. Let, people let me just say this. one sentence. What most people don't know, and also I didn't know, is that in most of those recordings, when you see video and then you hear something, very often times the audio actually is added on later. So very often, of course, these are yes. separate things. Of, yeah. mm -hmm. Not just the audio, but many of the audios of, of um, Adolf Hitler and the videos have been, um, you know, they've been played around with. Well, anyway, just have a look at this. I've sent you the thing of um, Von Braun. Yes. And um, let's have a look. Yes. Um, you could go to, you could go to where it's, uh, um, he was with, um, what do you call it? He worked with Nazi Germany's rocket development and things yeah, like he's this. he's a very and famous guy, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, then they took him for the missile defense system and all this. And you could read it um, where it says first space satellite explorer one. He launched it in 1958. What does it say after that? He worked with Walt Disney on a series of films. What? You mean Mickey Mouse? Carry on. <laughs> yes. 
which popularized the idea of human space travel. <laughs> Use the word brainwashed. Which brainwashed? <laughs> the idea which of thing? human space travel into the US population and, and beyond from 1955 to 1957. Ah, ah. what's going on here, Raphael? Um, you mean that the, founding that a new religion? Huh? Founding a new religion, space religion. There is more. It's like um, what many people ha have um, pointed out is um, something else. Yeah, that um, what do you call it? Many people have pointed out the similarities. Many people already know the similarities between um, Walt Disney and Hitler and his brother and um, what do you call it? Yes, that man who was um, anti-Jewish. What's his name? I forgot his name. Which What's country? that guy's name? Um, you know, um, the guy who um, they've got many videos of him. Yes, um, I, I forgot. What but many time? People... What country? Maybe then I can say something. No, I'm saying online. Many people uh, have, have pointed out that uh, um, what do you call it? That Walt Disney um, acted as as Hitler. Yes. Oh, he was he an anti-Semite or something, or he was an actor. Walt Disney could speak German, by the way. Many, that's why in the 1960s, my dear, when we watch many, many of these Hollywood movies, yes, um, the English sounds different because people couldn't speak English in America, by the way. So the newspapers are, are fake. Yes. So the thing is, many people have pointed this out, that um, what do you call it, Walt Disney was actually Adolf uh, and playing um, some of the scenes for Adolf Hitler and his brother was playing um, um, the Gestapo leader and things like this. Yeah, you, you've not heard these stories? I had it's never a, it, heard about this, that they had reconstructed that, no. Okay. Mm -hmm. What? You mean you don't know? It's like, it's like I thought um, many people know. Many people have examined video footage and many other things that, um, that of course, in this, this picture, um, Disney looks older. But um, anyway, my book, Nazi Germany, goes through goes through that they've totally falsified the Hitler of World War II. And they show the similarities of um, Walt Disney and um, Hitler and um, what do you call it? Yes. Um, they show the similarities because there's laws in some countries that you can't challenge the official history. We'll just say it's similarities. And um, in America, many people are saying it. Nothing to do with us. Yes. So um, there you go. There's that. And then there's... Um, Many people have pointed out the similarity between um, Disney's brother and um, the other things. There's many things. But anyway, there's more information in my books. And um, the thing is, Hitler became the Fuhrer on the 19th. Yes. According to official history. Yes. So um, the, um, these things, um, the thing is, um, 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 the thing is, they've totally falsified the history of the Second World War and everything, and all these pictures we're looking at and everything, many of them are actually just forgeries and many other things that, um, what do you call it? Yes, um, 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 that um, it, it, it's, uh, many people have said, noticed the similarities and the look-alike and even the dress codes and everything. Yes, um, that here we can see Adolf and we can see, um, you know, and we can see what's his name, Walt Disney, even when he's older. Yes. And of course, um, Disney could speak um, German. Yes. And um, the thing is, um, what, what, what's that? Um, I, um, here is Disney with his brother or his cousin. I forgot. It's one of them. And you could see in the background, he clearly looks like that other chief Nazi, um, you know, propaganda minister. Yes. You know, the propaganda minister and there's videos of him. Like, um, you know, he speaks. Um, um, have you seen that guy before? I forgot his name off the top of my head. Disney's cousin or his brother. Yes, I hadn't. I didn't really know much about him. No. But, but keep that picture on the screen. There's Walt Disney. Yes. With his brother or his cousin. Ah, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Um, uh, Hitler's best friend, um, Joseph Goebbels. Goebbels or whatever. So now the thing is, um, Let's um, try to identify this guy. Yeah. So the thing is that, uh, um, you know, many of these Nazis, mysteriously, they're saying in America, did they end up in America or were they already there? Yes. And were they just actors? Well, anyway, my book goes through it. That's um, um, Disney and his cousin. And you can see the picture. And now have a look at 
at um, you know, Heinz Kitsch Davis. What's his name? Joseph Goebbels. Can you see it? They look very similar. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's totally clear. So if anybody wants to understand this more, it's in my book, Adolf Hitler, or in um, Nazi Germany in, in the English language. Now they're just going to find 19 there. So the thing is, and they're just going to find 19. That book is at a normal price. But to understand who falsified this history and why, yes, they falsified this history using the number 19. Yeah, it's in the book Secrets of the Kabbalah. And why did I know all these things that they're putting all these mathematics and everything, Gamatria? It's because I know the Kabbalah. Yes, I know it. Yes. Oh, there's two sides of the Kabbalah. This book does not does not deal with the magical side and um, to do with the sorcery or the spirits. Um, I will go through that in another book. Yes. In the future. Yes. Um, hopefully if I have time. But anyway, as you can see. So the thing is, many people will say that um, what do you call it? Um, you know, these Nazis, they usually ended up in America. Did they really end up there or were they already there? Don't forget, um, in Germany, uh, uh, um, uh, also some of them, it's like Walter Hallstein, Hallstein, he was a Nazi, yes, and um, what do you call it, yes, he became the head of the EU commissioner, yes, head of the EU commission, so there's many of them, thousands of them that um, they ended up, um, what do you call it, so if the Nazis were defeated, yes, and remember when we pointed out that it was daddy, Yes, um, who be, who um, did them? You know the Treaty of Rome. Do you remember? Mm -hmm. Daddy, I mean the Lord God, the Pope. Yes, um, you know we should address him with his proper title. You know it's a, it's um, very clear. Adolf Heusinger became NATO's chief of staff. Yes, that's how much. Yes, what do you call it? Yes, that's how much the Nazis were defeated or if they falsified the history that these people were Nazis at all, that all these people are just actors who, and, and they're hiding who was the real administration of 1933 and they've totally falsified the history of Germany. It's one of those two things like Kurt Waldheim. Here he is with that, um, you know, who uh, um, that other guy who looks like Disney's cousin. I'm, I think that's him. But anyway, this Kurt Waldheim and he became the Secretary General of the United Nations, <laughs> straight after the war. Ah, are you beginning to see? But they totally destroyed Germany and they totally occupied it that there's American bases everywhere. So the real people who were in power in Germany before then, the real people and the real history of Germany. We, we made a video about this, yes? And um, yeah. I'm showing that they totally falsified the entire history and they've modified it. Are you beginning to see that they've totally modified the history and um, that they've, are you, can you see it now, Raphael? Well, it's obvious from all the things you've shown that they've played around with the history everywhere. Yes. <laughs> and also it so explains a little bit, I mean, it's not clear, of course, exactly what happened, but it was always strange why so many of these guys oh, who were clear. defeated suddenly ended oh, up into all these wait. big positions. It's not clear. It's not clear if you haven't read the Hitler book. Did you read that book? Oh, yeah. Ah, so if you've read that book, does that tell you a bit more clarity? Definitely. Yes. So now, after people have read that book, yeah, I did 20 books and other things. Yeah, of course. Yeah, uh, this book has got a high price because... You have to you have to study so much and there's no way that people were it's like people are noticing these things yeah many people are saying this guy became that and that but nobody knew about the kabbalah codes or anything else i've never mentioned it before that it, um it's because i knew the kabbalah very well yes but um that helped but what, one of the major things it wasn't just the kabbalah what gave it away about the number 19 is um i i I, I was studying Gamatria, Kabbalah, and many of these things for years when I was a child, and um, many things, Gamatria in different languages. I was always crazy about different languages. It was until, you know, I was about 15 or 16, I met um, a Palestinian guy and an Iraqi guy. And then, um, you know, you know, when you're young at that age, you're more open to um, 
what do you call it, compared to today. Many people don't even want to read the Quran or anything to do with Islam. But at the age of 15, you turn and think, oh, okay, go on. Yeah. So that's when, um, you know, the Quran, it said something strange. Yeah, it turned around and said that over the fire. It says the word fire, but the Arabic word in that chapter, let me just go through it. It's it's basically the same in Germanic languages. Yes, um, it doesn't say hellfire. It just say many translations use the word fire. And um, let me just show you. Um, let me just open up the Quran and then um, I'll show you what it actually says. So I found it um, very intriguing and I knew it straight away around that time. I found it and then um, the thing is, of course, I, I figured it out straight away, but they've translated it as the word hell. And um, just before that verse number, oh, this new book that I've done, Secrets of the Kabbalah, it shows that the verse numbers are fake. Yes, because different translations have different verse numbers and different printed Qurans because um, um, it's been falsified and I go through the evidence in the new book. But anyway, it turned around and says, what do you call it? What is the word for hell or the word for fire according to here? What does it say? Uh, Sakara. Sakara, yes. So the thing is, in many Arabic dialects in the Middle East, I couldn't find it. I found it in English. I found it in German. Yes like something that burns. Today, um, it's used for something else, but we know the word cigar, that's one. That's one. And then another thing is, because of the context of um, this, this, um, this um, what it says, um, the thing is, um, it, it's talking about, you know, numerology and something else. So what, what this thing does, it turns around and tells you over it is 19. Some people have said to me, it doesn't say 19, but um, you know, I've learned um, a few basic Arabic numbers and Hebrew numbers. Here it says sta shra. Yes, sta um, means nine, and ashra means ten. So ten plus nine means um, nineteen. Yeah, sta ashra, uh, sta washra, however they pronounce it. Yes, is nineteen. So and then the word sacra also means sacred. Mm -hmm. Yes like um, cor sacra in Germanic languages, in Latin languages, sacred, and also the Germanic word secret, secret, mm -hmm. secret comes from this. So when it's talking about this 19, it's referring to a secret. And so when you go further, what the Quran actually says, um, what do you call it? The translation here is vague. Yeah, because they falsified the dictionaries. Uh, the new book explains um, the Ottoman Arabic and um, other Arabic and, um, um, you know, European Arabic, because don't forget Arabic was used in Spain. Um, they called it, you know, Spanish Muslims. Um, the Spanish were called Arabs before. Yes. Do you know this? Muslim Spain uh, yes. until the 17th century. The Spanish were not called Spanish. They were called Arabs. Yeah, huh? I forgot that. Yeah, so were the Portuguese. They were Arabs. <laughs> I forgot this. So anyway, in this book, yes, I explained the falsification of dictionaries and other things because when it says the word sacra there, yes, they've put the word hell. It could mean, it could mean, um, you know, fire. Yes, like a, 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 a cigar. We call it cigar because it means burning. But anyway, it says this. We have not made their number except as a trial or a test or um, uh, the word, um, I think it says pitna or something, I'm not sure. It, it, that could mean something like a headache of a trial for those who don't believe. So that those who were given, you know, um, the books of God will be convinced and those who have believed will increase in their faith. Yeah. And then the, the, those people whose hearts who, you know, like a disease that they're just going to do my head in or anybody else's head in. Yeah. You know, they're just going to do people's heads in, yeah, and say, what does God mean by this as an example? Yes, it's because, the th well, anyway, in my book, I've done my best to explain more about this 19. Of course, um, you know, I, if some people aren't satisfied, I can't do anything else. This is what uh, many secret societies and organizations are using it. Um, uh, the book explains why they're using it for what particular purpose. Yes, 
and why they're doing it because there is a war going on and um, there's two sides of the Kabbalah there is the Islamic Kaaba and Allah and it's to do with God and then there is the Kaaba Kabbalah and the Kaaba of Allah in Europe Ka Kaaba Allah for the Muslims and Kaaba Allah for the Europeans and the um, Eastern Illuminati and what they're doing and why they're using it. There's a major reason why they're doing it. Anyway, for the printing, let's go back. Yes. Um, so they're writing backwards and everything. And um, you're trying to tell me they've got thousands of pages like this from hundreds of cities around the world. And they printed everything backwards and they wrote backwards with their hands. How did they pick up the small metal? Yes, it has to be a small metal rod. Yes, so that they could put it there and they did it if they couldn't read and write backwards. Am I correct? Have I proved my point? Yeah, yeah. And I mean, how, yeah, the... how how difficult was this compared to the type of machine? You know, <laughs> what machines they were using until the 1880s? Let me just show this machine. It's laughable. Yes, <laughs> they were printing like this. It's not even a machine. <laughs> and they're printing. Um, wait, let me just show you. Yes, um, they're telling us. Um, you know what they're telling us? Let's see. Yes, how many books were printed just in the in the 15th century? How many books? How many books, Raphael? Do you estimate? Oh, I don't know, thousands. Thousands. Oh, well, let me just to make it easy for you. They are telling us that by the year 1500, they'd already printed 9 million books in French and in um, Italian and a few other languages. And they printed them all backwards, reading backwards like that, putting all the letters one by one. Oh. Does that sound believable to you? No. Um, why not, Raphael? Can you please explain why? <laughs> Just because of the amount of effort it would take is insane. Uh, some people are and... saying that I, I've been... Um, you just said no. So last time I asked you this question, so, some idiot, I call him an idiot, turned out said Raphael doesn't sound like he's convinced. And another idiot turned out said David's trying to force him to say it. Have I just forced you to say no? I'm or not, did your brain think I'm that sorry, this I'm not, does not, I'm not even gonna, I'm not even commenting on that. Have but I bribed you? What? No. Or maybe, not maybe yet. I bribed. <laughs> not yet. No. So what? I, what I want to say is, aside from the idea that this is supposedly the Middle Ages or until 1500s, uh, the amount of effort. Oh, it even says after only 50 years of printing. So here we could even calculate. So they yes. don't even have a lot of time to that. do it. No, and, so now and the real thing, actually, what I wanted to say is that there is far too few fragments surviving from that time. This was always my problem when researching all the documents that very quickly. Oh, no, no, no. There's, no, there's only far very too few, few surviving, left. but the museums have them. Ah, let me just yeah, correct you, my dear. They don't have so many, or they hide them all. No, and no, no, the then they find them. them. Every year they find yeah. new ones, right? <laughs> Probably. Yeah, no, they've got many of them. That's why they print them. That's why we go and visit these museums. Let me just show you these beautiful museums that people are visiting and paying their cash. But when David's got a price for his book, they're going to say, oh, it's too expensive. Okay, yes, people are going on holidays. They've got many of these books. They've got them. And that's why we're doing reprints. We're printing them now. Oh, mm. by the way, let's add up the 16th century, 17th century, 18th century. They printed so many books. Yes. So now how many books do you think they printed by uh, the uh, 20th century using this, um, you know, crazy type of printing that's so difficult? How many books do you think they printed? Well, it would at least have to be 10 times as much. So it should be at least 100 million. The problem. Uh, you mean 0. 0.1 billion books they're printed? Mm. Get the hell out of here. Are you serious? Are you serious, Raphael? Well, I didn't claim that they printed so many. So <laughs> you just said that. Ah, okay. <laughs> so now they printed. So if they printed, you know, um, you know, hundreds of millions of how many pages? Billions billions trillions of pages yeah don't forget these books they're big look at that picture very well how big are these books Raphael? yeah, yeah. pages 
Oh yeah. So if somebody still wants to argue with me, okay, guys, you go and print these books backwards, putting the letters together. So many of them. Yes. Go and do it and then come back and tell me and then come back and tell me that in the 15th century, 16th century, 17th century, 18th century and 19th century, the Renaissance was, was which language? Was it in Italian or was it in, I'll let you guess, Raphael, because there's many dummies who are listening. Yes, or peasants, daddy would say, these peasants. Yes, so just to help some of these poor peasants who are listening, what was the language of these Renaissance books? You can choose, um, um, was it, um, choose several languages from these. Was it Italian, French, don't say it yes, Italian, French, um, what do you call it? Um, Iranian, Pakistani, Indian, Nepali, Bangladeshi, Sri Lankan, Tibetan, Uzbekistan language or Kazakhstan language or Kyrgyzstan language or Tajikistan language or um, Bashkortostan language, or um, South Korean language, or Taiwanese language, um, Hong Kong language, Malaysian language, Vietnamese language, Cambodian language, Laos language, um, Myanmar language, um, Papua New Guinea language. Oh, choose two languages out of them that they printed books in the most, in which two languages from them? Well, you didn't Would mention you... Latin, but aside from that would be Italian and French. Ah, okay. So now we've got millions of books printed in Italian. Yes. And hundreds of millions of pages. Yes. Printed mm -hmm. in the 15th century, 16th century, 17th century, 18th century, 19th century. And many of these libraries are full of all these hundreds of millions of pages of books. So now I want you to read this, Raphael, because people are saying, no, David, maybe they printed them. They had super eyes. They could see the small writing and they were supermen. They printed billions of pages backwards and they did it in Italian. What does it say, Raphael? Wikipedia entry, Italian language, only 2.5% of Italy's population could speak the Italian standardized language properly when the nation was unified in 1861. It's not just me. Many people know. It's like I made a video. There was one idiot from Italy who didn't even bother to watch the full video. And he commented, I made a video with you. Yes. And in that video, if he just watched it to the end, later on, I, I specified, yes, the Italian people couldn't speak Italian. They only learned it in school, most of them in the 20th century. Oh, that 2%? Um, that's the Jesuits, the humanists, you know, daddy and his friends and the gods. Yes. Um, you know, the gods um, uh, um, who became God. Yes, because they knew the secret of 19 and of 33, or they claimed that they became gods. Um, this is in my um, secret of the Kabbalah book once again. Yes. So the thing is, um, what do you call it? Yes. So now I have turned around and said that all these Bibles, yes, that are now in Italy, that they're showing that there's thousands of them that they've got printed with the dates on. Um, or people say that um, um, it was from that time that the evidence shows the writing style, printing style is from, you know, 1750, 1751, 1752, um, 1653, um, 1601. Do you think that all these uh, Bibles are genuine or are they fake? Well, by now I would assume anything I mean, anything could be fake, but especially anything before 1900. Well, well, make the answer the question clearly. Well, I, of course, if I mean, I don't, I don't have more from the information I have now. They, they would all be, of course, from what I understand, the current with the current information I have, I would assume that they are faked, forged, and recently printed. I'm saying because there's many people who could go there and they could turn around and say, Raphael. Raphael, um, what do you call it, convinced me that these Italian Bibles must be genuine from the year 1501, 1502. Now I must get baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Well, and people, he goes and gets yes, baptized. People will always make up cra crazy interpretations from things that people didn't ah, yeah. say. Thank so, you, because, but because yeah. there are some people who are like, who are turning around and saying, Raphael just said yes, but he wasn't convinced, and David's like forcing him. He's trying to force him, and he keeps saying yes. And it doesn't yeah, even yeah. matter. It doesn't even matter what I think, to be honest. By the way, I'm going to say it again. I say yeah or yeah. Do you know why? 
because I actually think we've lost connection sometimes. I've said this before. Yes. Are you there? Yes. See, yes, yes. I've just said yes again. I I keep worrying that the connection's gone. And the and these dogs, some of these dogs who comment like that, yes, don't understand that we have to do the recording again. It's like sometimes you turn and say, David, I lost you from that point. Can you start again from there? Hasn't that happened many times? Sure, of course. And then I turn and think, oh, I can't remember what I said. Oh, let me just go back and see. And it's like um, it's hard work preparing these videos. And some of these, um, you know, dogs will turn around and say whatever and saying he David's becoming annoying. But I came back. Yeah, you came back for the knowledge. But then why can't you leave a nice comment or something? Why do you have to add all the extra crap? Yes. You know what I mean? It's difficult enough as it is. Yes, it's so difficult. Yeah, one one would think so, but you know, people I all have, have to their... choose my words carefully because people's lives are at stake. People genuinely believe these Bibles and something. Yes, and they're, and they're fighting for it, saying this codes, this, that, everything. Yes, the codes are there. My book explains how they put the Bible codes inside and uh, how they actually put it inside. So I've actually shown it. Like, for example, let's let's have a look at some of more of these things. So um these um what do you call it? You know, many things that they're showing, you know, printed. Just look at this, Ratian's decree and all these things. They've got them in museums. We can find them today that the, many people are now quoting these books saying, hey, have a look at this, have a look at that. You know what I mean? Yes, it's because um, the thing is, people are actually ge now genuinely thinking that the printing press uh, and all these things, yeah, we got history, we've got records. Guys, you've got nothing before 1900. It's actually so, so much of a disaster. You've actually got nothing that um, what do you call it? That it was only in the 1880s that they managed to make these new machines, like we said last time. And the thing is, I want you to imagine, yes, that when they did get these new machines, you've got to manufacture these new machines. Then you've got to send them all around the world to different cities and other places. But they are telling us, look at this garbage that they, <laughs> that they're putting all the letters together and they're doing the printing like this. Yeah, that's what they're telling us. So all these newspapers and everything else and all this other history, even I knew it was a fake a long time ago. That's why I started looking for real history many years ago. And that's why I knew about the codes and um, I could explore on the codes like I'm many years ahead. Yes. So it's like the moment people understand this history, they are going to be many years ahead and they'll realize, hey, no, how can I believe this? The source is this. It's impossible that they could have done this. It's impossible because you've got to put the letters and you've got to put them like that. Yes. So now, Raphael, all these 19th century newspapers before the year 1900, because they're saying it's after the 1880s, they started manufacturing this bigger machine to do the smaller letters with the, um, you know, with this typeset. It was discovered in the 1870s. Yes, then it became like a proper machine in the 1880s for the typewriter, the big machine. Yes, last time I sent you photographs of the machine, have a look at it. Yes, but even then, yes, most people know that it became global or worldwide by what year, even this photograph tells you. Yes, it tells you that um, you, you could read it on the, go to the left-hand side paragraph. It says, like you said, the typewriter thing was discovered or created in what year, 1872. Yes. So in the 1880s, by the time they got these machines out there, yes, so that they could be, you got to make it. How easy do you think it is to make one of these machines? Yes. That nobody even knows what it is. Let me just enlarge it. How easy do you think it is that you're going to make one of many copies of this machine so that people can start printing things? Well, it looks, how it easy looks is more it? complex than a car. <laughs> Yeah, it's difficult, more difficult than a, than a car. And, and the thing is just to organize it. And then um, many of the things, it's like, it's like the cars in the 1950s and 60s when they broke down the headaches, the nightmare. But that machine is more difficult because of all the different letters, everything. So now, like I said before, I'm still going to say it again. Many of these books, yes from 19th century, 18th century, 17th century, 16th century, 15th century, they were all printed in the 20th century. 
in the 1920s, in the 1930s, in the 1940s. They were still printing them in the 1960s, 70s, and putting a date on 1861, 1871, 1881. Yes, yeah, that's what there I you meant. go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's why they say we've just found it. Right. Yes, yeah. right. of course. Yeah. So the thing is now, the thing is, that's why I turned around and said, this is such a very serious thing. Yes, that's why anybody who's been through it, yes, and who goes through all my books, it's a disaster. I recommend people that um, don't just sit there and think, hey, I know it all now. I've understood it. Yes, David showed the printing, this and that. I watched a video. Yeah, we're talking about globally. How the hell did they invent the history of Indonesia? The people over there, they're not, they're not going to believe you. How did they invent the history of Peru? They're just not going to believe you. They're going to say, we got newspapers from all these small towns, hundreds of them. Yes, even in Austria, you know, they've got newspapers from oh, yes. all the small towns and villages. Yeah, they've got them in museums. They've got them. Um, you can go to the museum websites. They've already uploaded them all. Have yep. you noticed? Yes. Because they were still creating them in the 1980s, 1970s. They're still inventing them right now. I mean, and I, the thing wait, is, wait, wait, because the digitization of these things maybe only started 10 years ago. So this means they could have even just start, produced it they until were still then. Preparing it. They're still preparing them right now. It's hard to believe. And the thing is, when you go through this history, they put their codes, their mathematical codes. And so the thing is about the 19th century, the biggest joke is the Napoleon. I told you I couldn't find that 100 years. Yes. And like I showed you, showed you like, let's just have a look at what they did to Japan. You're going to, it's like when I turn around and tell people this, even the Japanese people, they find it hard to believe. Yes. So um, let's just go through Japanese history. Yes. But that Napoleon book, if you don't read it, you will not see this codes and these Kabbalah codes they're putting everywhere when they falsify the history. Then the other book, Secrets of the Kabbalah, explains why. And that is when you um, uh, um, it connects to the Quran, why the Quran exposes them. And then you will turn around and think, ah, at last now I can see what this global war is about. It's because some people have, have turned around and said, am I trying to make Islam look favorable? I'm just showing you history. I, I, I get, Wait, I just want to ask you, is there a single person on this earth who has got the oral Torah of the prophet Moses right now? Who's memorized it from the times of Moses and it's been passed down orally. Can we find anybody? I really wouldn't know, but not that I'm aware no, of. No, we can't. Uh, this is official history. Is there a single person who memorized the Vedas thousands of years ago and they passed it down from family to family no. and we could find this family in India? Is there a single person? No. Is there a single person who've, who've passed down the Mayan codes or these Mayan, Mayan history or these things that they're claiming that were mysteriously found in the 20th century? I'll go to that next time. But they're telling us the Mayans had an oral tradition. Does a single person with this oral tradition exist? Mm, good point, yeah. Doesn't. Yes or no? No. No. Okay, now we've been told that the original gospel was an oral tradition. Does a single person in the entire world of like one billion Christians, can we find a single person who has got this gospel that Jesus Christ left behind? That's this oral book. Does it exist? No. No, they're telling us the Buddhist oral tradition. Does a single person from these billion Chinese in Southeast Asia, um, another half a billion or more, does a single person exist with the oral tradition of Buddha? No. Um, now, the Muslims, they're telling us that they've got an oral tradition and they're telling us that the Muslims have memorized does the Quran. Does a single person exist? <laughs> yeah, well, let me finish the question. Does a single person with this Arabic, Arabic Quran exist, that they passed it down from generation to generation. Does a single person exist anywhere in the world with this Quran in their brain? Yes, and actually there's millions from what, what? I What? Excuse me. Wait, Raphael, wait a minute. Are you trying to tell me that they forged all these newspapers, everything, they've, they've put all this fake history there, but we've got something that we can look at? people have passed down that goes back that we can trace at least through family heritage up to 200 years because 
old people can say, I remember my grandfather. Oh, yeah, he passed it to me. Yeah, that we can trace it up to 200 years. And that means by uh, we could say 300. Fomenko says 500 from that. Are you trying to tell me it exists? Are you trying to say there's millions of people who memorize something that the new, that these people in power could not modify and they've swallowed this book? And it's in many countries around the world, all over the world, going from Siberia to Africa, from America to um, China. Is this what you've just said? Yes. What? Damn. Isn't this going to be a special, important book? Obviously, yeah. I was about to say, I, I can understand your interest in that book from this historical point ah. of view. And that's what it's so all now, about. Now you're beginning to see. Now, isn't it strange? By now, you've noticed there is no way this is a coincidence that on purpose they're putting 19 everywhere. I showed you it's in the space agency, like this guy who's an ex-Hitler ex guy and is in NASA. They put all the 19s in NASA. And by the way, um, all these 19s and everything in um, the NASA, it's in my book, Ancient Greece, didn't exist. Yeah? So they put it there. By the way, you even know now, this is no coincidence. Yes? That they put the 19s there. You've just seen it's in the ancient Rome and whatever. Don't you think it's a joke that they've gone a bit too far? They put the 19 there? In the Roman, 19 line, died on 19 BC, finished by 19 oh, yeah, BC. yeah, of course. Yeah. 19 copies of it. <laughs> Don't you think it's a joke? Yeah, obviously, once you get the pattern recognition to look at it, of course, okay, so it's, now, it's obvious. So now, what would you say about this book called the Quran, which turned around and says, hey, this is one of the greatest warnings to mankind. And this Quran tells you about this number 19. How important is this book? It exposes and explains to you about the 19 in simple words, that even the peasants are memorizing this. How important is it? If it was not for the Quran, I would not have noticed. I am not going to lie. I noticed the 19s and everything, but before the Quran, I couldn't figure it out, many other things. How yeah. important does, the, does it make this book? Well, uniquely important, obviously. How important? Because they're, they've they overdone it. Like, don't you find it a joke? They're even putting it in 19 paragraphs. Well, 19 from a sentences. historical point of view, without still understanding why they would put the 19 everywhere, just to make it look even more important, or I don't know what, but just from a historical yes. point of view, it's if, it's the, if it's the only thing for which we have an oral tradition of 200 years, then it is uniquely That's important. That's that you could trace by guarantee. Yes, then it's because uniquely important in that sense because yeah. anything else could have been or was likely altered at some point uh, yes. along the line. Yes, um, I will explain how it's 200 years. Like, for example, you could meet old people, let's say age 90 or um, uh, uh, 95 uh, um, somewhere. I've met many people through my time. I've asked them, hey, did your grandfather know the Quran? And some of them said no. Some of them said, yeah, my grandfather memorized it. Oh, he taught me because I was a child. And, um, you know, my father had to work in the fields. So that's how I thought your grandfather knew it. And I said, did your grandfather tell you any stories where he got the Quran? They started and when he said, oh, he got it passed down in the family. So therefore, I could trace it down to, to those 200 years. And then if it's that 200 years, you could say up to 300 years. Now, the 19th century, I can't find it. I've explained that in Napoleon does not exist. So I'm thinking there could be an error of up to 100 years. Now, the other thing is Fomenko shows that it that the Quran is up to 500 years because the Quran does show that um, the old trinity that was used, the father, mother and the son, which is not in the current trinity. They've changed the trinity since then. Yes. So the thing is, this book, the Quran, it tells us these things and these things like it tells us about Osiris. That's a mystery. Yes, and then it tells you, it actually tells you who the Jews of the Quran, by the way, worship Osiris as the son of God. Now, those people, I don't see them doing that in Israel. I see them doing that in Masonic organizations where they have the symbol of Osiris. So when the Quran refers to Jews, who is it referring to? That's a question Muslims should think about if there's any Muslim viewers. Well, anyway, let's um, have a look at this falsification of history and let's just look at how ridiculous this is. We've mentioned Japan before, but let's go into, into it. 
um, a, a bit more about this. You could read this, Japan and Europe. Read through this. Read it. The greatest increase in pig breeding occurred during the war. World War I devastated the local population and like in other parts of the region, famine was widespread. When World War II came, Palestinians still remembered the despair and deprivation caused by total war. Okay, so now what they did is, this is just, they've mentioned, um, you know, the Middle East. But for example, what was going on is that, what do you call it, yes? Um, Throughout Europe and everywhere, the 19th century, there's all these wars and there's um, strange things going on. Now, the thing is, many people will not understand the seriousness of these wars and they leave a comment, uh, um, you know, without even thinking. They've they've not looked at, at um, what happened in Romania, the Russo-Turkish wars. They've not looked at the Franco-Prussian war, even though the history has been falsified and many things. But my book, Orphan Trains, goes through it and the mass movement of people. Like, just look at this, um, this quarter of a million Palestinians in North America. Uh, how did they get there? Yes. Why did they go so far from Europe? Why did they end up going to the Americas? and um, to other places. I mean, la ah, this is for all these people who are turning around saying Europe's been flooded with Americans, with um, foreigners. What many people don't know is that there's so many white people who don't like the cold weather in Europe. So they've gone to invade and live in darker skinned people's lands that um, there's 250 million white people who've left Europe in the last 100 years. Goodbye, they don't wanna be here. <laughs> so when these, um, you know, Neo-Nazis are claiming that the white population is going down. They're lying. And um, when other other people are saying, yeah, the local population, low birth rate, they're lying and they're not telling you of um, how many people have left in the last, you know, in the 1980s, 1990s, thinking, I want to go live in Florianopolis. Let me just show you all oh, the beaches of Florianopolis and the and the beaches. I mean, the girls. Yes. <laughs> Oh damn! I don't even want to tell you. It's like um, it's a, it's a, it's like a par paradise in Brazil. Yes, um, you know um, the apartments, uh, skyscrapers. You know, bom dia. Yes, it's just a beautiful place. I say to pego. There's some beautiful songs there, and um, let me just um, sh uh, show you. So, um, 250 million white people have left Europe in the last hundred years. 250 million. Yes. Um, and um, if you go back, if you go and tell them to go, to go over here, um, you know, they're from um, Europe, they're going to say, get the hell out of here. We're not coming no matter what, <laughs> even if you pay us cash. Yeah. Oh, it depends how much you're paying. Yeah. If I was in Florianopolis and you paid me, yes, then I will come to Europe. And then, you know, once I got the cash, I'm going. Yes. <laughs> because there's no way I would like to stay in Europe. The the cold weather in in many many places. Um, I, ah, Michel Tello. Yes, oh, oh, his music is so beautiful. I recommend it. Yes, there's um, I said to Pego, Michel Tello. He's is um, famous in Brazil. You know, it's like whenever I go to Brazil, I, and I'm always listening to that and to um, Humilde Residencia. Have you heard of these songs? No. <sighs> yes or no? No. Oh my god, I never mentioned music, but this is one of my favorite tracks. Yes. yes. Wait, in case people think there's not any Europeans there, I'm going to send a screenshot of um, Michelle Tello and I'm um, just show you. And um, oh my god, the girls, um, they're just so amazing. It's all, oh my god, if you're a playboy, I advise you, you know, get the hell out of Europe. The, the women are more friend, friendlier in, um, in um, you know, Brazil, in Latin America. Wait, this song. It's so amazing. Wait, uh, let me just show you. Yeah, wait, yeah. wait, I'm just going to play the chorus, then you'll know. I forgot the word. <laughs> I don't know, it's in Portuguese. Uh, if anybody wants international music, 
um, please leave a comment. I will recommend music from all over the world. But anyway, <laughs> that song is amazing. Brazil, oh, you got to go there. You got to go. Yeah. And um, what do you call it? Yes. Um, it's a beautiful place to emigrate. So any of these people are saying the number of white people are going down, they're lying. They're actually genuinely telling the lies. Yes, it's because many people have gone. They don't want to come back here. Yeah, um, so that's that. But anyway, let's get back to, um, you know, the scam. The scam. Oh, unfortunately, Michel Tello, Florianopolis and all these beautiful, oh, yeah, beautiful girls over there in Latin America. I'm going to have to say goodbye for now. <laughs> yes, and then um, let's get back to the, you know, ah, to the history. Yes. So um, about the pork, yes, and the pig, many people think that pig has been around for thousands of years. That's what they think. Now, the Quran says a strange story. It turns around and says that there was humans long ago that were cursed, and they became in that, um, that um, God, or Allah, yes, converted them into pigs or um, what do you call it, yes, or apes or something. Many people are not sure what that means. Yes, uh, even I don't want to interpret, but it's pretty clear. It turned around and says that some humans were transformed into pigs. Now, I, I thought I would study the history of pigs because the thing is um, um, Jewish people don't eat pork. So I thought I will investigate it. Yes, and it, you could read this. Prior to 1539, no swine species were found on the North American continent. Excuse me, you mean there was no pigs in Canada, Alaska, in Texas, in Mexico, in the United States, throughout everywhere? Is this what it says? Or maybe you read it backwards, mm -hmm. Raphael? No, no, that's what it says, yeah. Ah, so now we've got a problem. So let's go through this problem. Yes? And um, what do you call it? Let's now we're in the South America for most of history. The Americas didn't have pigs at all. Yeah. And they originated in the old world. Opinion. Uh -huh. This and, is an opinion. Mm -hmm. but pigs originated in the old world. Ah, it's not an opinion. This is actually history also. They were introduced to the, to the Americas by who? By the Spanish and other and colonial other groups colonial here it says oh, when we say spanish we've got to turn around and say it was the jesuits and um, the vatican's boys mm -hmm. yes that's what people don't understand because they've conquered spain and they've turned it into slavery and the spanish people were muslims at the time and they falsified the history saying that no there were north africans they invaded and they were the arabs but we can't seem to find these things so now and what do you call it? The Jesuits and the Catholic priests, they've arrived with their militias and their soldiers. Yes. And um, what did they mysteriously bring with them? In South and America, Rio. yes. Are pigs native to Latin America is the question. And in South America, domestic pigs arrived with European settlers. And mm -hmm. the wild boars? Were introduced by the Argentinian rancher Pedro Luro at the beginning of the 20th century for hunting purposes. Okay. So we're talking it's recent history. So most of the pigs arrived only in the last four or 500 years. So um, um, the thing is now, if we go to Japan today, this is very important because we mentioned Japan before, what the Americans did in World War II after the defeat, telling the women to take off their headscarves or what the Muslims call hijab or um, for them to take off their long dresses, what the Muslim women wear and what European women used to wear, used to wear um, before World War I. So this is what we hear about Japan today. One of the popular dishes is which animal? Wow, the pig is the ah. nation's most popular meat. Mm -hmm. It's one of the most popular, yes. So what do you call it? Yes. But let's find out now in the 16th century, 15th century, 17th century, the Jesuits when they went there, yes. What did the Japanese used to refuse to eat? So the Japanese refused to eat lard, hens, ducks, pigs, cow, ah. horse. Mm -hmm. Yes. So simply, um, what type of people normally have this diet? So there's two types of people I can think of. You can mention it. It would be uh, those who follow certain Jewish, Jewish doctrine Muslim. and Muslim doctrine. Yeah. Muslim. Mm -hmm. Yes. So the thing is now, when did pigs come into Japan? Yes. So... 
So um, the thing is, what they've told us is this. This is the bogus history. They say that slowly it took a few centuries. First, there was nothing. And then they say, um, what do you call it? Pigs were introduced, not in Japan, but Okinawa. Okinawa is in the south. It's same like saying that um, there's, um, what do you call it, Alaska, and then Texas is in the south. Right. Yes. Okinawa, um, saying, uh, um, they're saying pigs came there from China. That's what they were claiming. But now the thing is, most of the pigs mysteriously arrived. Of course, they're going to give it a nice, nice history and say relief, but it wasn't relief or anything. Yes, you could read, read through it. Yes. Hogs were sent by U.S. farmers from places like Iowa as disaster relief aid. Mm -hmm. Ah, so keep reading it. During the U.S. occupation from 1945 to 1952, the U.S. and Japanese governments developed a oh, Wait school... a minute, it's not Japanese, stop. So you could see they're lying. It was the U.S. government and they put, um, they put their people in power. They, they right. murdered all the others. Yes. What did they do? Develop a what? So the new government developed a school lunch program through which a diet that is high in animal protein was introduced to the school children. Wow, that's well, they're giving it a nice problematic history. for many reasons, actually. Well, they're mm -hmm. giving it a nice words. Let's cut the bullshit and turn around and say, America came. Yeah, they took over. Yeah, and they told them, said, hey, we're going to be selling you our stuff so that then you're going to have to buy from us to eat for the rest of your life. Now, they tried to do this in in um, other parts of the world and they failed. Yes. Um, what do you call it? Yes. For example, um, a little of this story, a little of it is in the book Secrets of the Kabbalah. But what they did to Japan is, you know, you get the kids hooked on pork. Of course, they're going to put a nice thing and say it's high in protein. Are you trying to say the Japanese were less human? The Americans had a nightmare fighting the Japanese in World War II. They know they weren't any less human. Yes, everyone knows the story in World War II. Yes, the Japanese were crazy. They would fight to the death. You know the story, yes? Yes, it's a famous story, yeah? Yes, so so the thing is, um, let's have a look at this. So now, even in Wikipedia, this is what official history says. So the thing is that, um, of course, they've invented this history, so you'll find many problems with it. Read this. They're trying to say that around World War One, the Sino-Japanese War. Yes, read it. Yeah, during the Sino-Japanese War, this is 1905. Yeah, beef was supplied to the military for soldiers' rations, and therefore became scarce for civilian consumption. So what they're saying is that the soldiers had to have all the beef, and Japan was short of beef in uh, around just before World War One. So at this time, yeah, then pork started to become cheaper and more popular, leading to greater consumption and the development of pork based dishes. So mm -hmm. they're saying so now they're trying to say that pork really came in just before World War One. No, there is no evidence of that either. That's an invented history because they're trying to make it acceptable to the Japanese. So what the what they did is um, what do you call it? Yes, people can study this more deeper. Yes, we can't seem to find pigs even in Europe or in the Americas or in many places in the world. So it's a serious question. Where did this animal originate? Are you mm -hmm. see what I'm getting at? Mm -hmm. Remember, I showed you the pig wars and um, in the night in the 1880s and 90s, America forced the Europeans in, in Germany, Holland, France, other places, Poland to take pork. Remember, we went through this yeah. before. Yes. So it's a question. Where did this animal come from? You see. So now um, um, this is the thing. Japan changes its eating habits. Many people have put this down. So what do you call it? Yes. So um, the entire eating habit, many old people say we can't remember having pork here. So just after the war, the school lunch program. And of course, today they wrote down this history in the 1980s saying we did this for animal protein. It's a lie. The thing is, they, they turn around and they thought, let's give them pork. Then they're going to have to buy pork from us. You understand? Yeah, yes. Simple. Yeah. Yeah. Simple. So um, the pork and everything else, they totally destroyed Japan and got the Japanese dependent on these 
new things. And um, what do you call it? Yes, they're trying to tell us that the people who decided this were thinking, yeah, seemed like it seemed like saying Israel is trying to turn around and say, let's make the people of Gaza healthy, more nutrition. So they're saying, who decided this? Just after the war, yes? And um, who decided this? You could read this yourself. During the US occupation, yeah, it was the supreme commander of the Allied powers. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah, of course, they worked to, don't sure. you believe it? They worked to enhance the nutrition of the Japanese sure. to improve their health you know, and resistance to diseases. Whoa. Yeah. You know what? I don't remember the Americans ever giving so much food to the Iraqis. They were there for 19 <laughs> years in the war. Prove it, guys. That means this is fake history. They're lying. So I don't remember them doing that to Afghanistan, all this food. I don't remember that they sent food to Gaza. Oh, now they're throwing a few, you know, parcels for the media and showing, hey, look, we're helping. Liars, liars. This history is a lie, even you know it. Yeah, the American military thought we want to make them healthy. Yes, but also read this. Carry on reading. In December, yes, 1946. Yes, uh, the U.S. and Japanese and governments. Program, yes, they wanted to not only provide food for malnourished children, but also to teach them to acquire a taste for food. Oh, ah. impo important, such as powdered milk and meat. Mm -hmm. Ah, you mean you're trying to get them addicted to pork? Yeah, and powdered milk. I mean, that's all ba just generally bad. Yeah, but, but can't you see? <laughs> it's like this: if yeah. you're going to give kids. You know, like in China, children, many children eat insects. So that's why they eat insects. Many children eat snakes, so they find it tasty. Yes, our monkeys in China. Yes. And in the Philippines, um, some strange animals and in Indonesia. So now, if you're going to be giving them this pork, what's it going to do? Of course, they're going to continue eating it later. Mm -hmm. Yes. So now a similar thing happened in China. A similar thing happened in England. A similar thing happened in France. So when I turned around and said, this was not the food that European people originally ate, they didn't, or the Asiatics. The whole world was something else, you see? And then, mm -hmm. now the thing is, where did this pig animal come from? You see? Yes? And so now the thing is, there was a problem with this thing. So soon you'll tr see there is more of a scam to this. Yes, I want you to read this now. Yes, um, what do you call it? Yes, the SCAP officials, whoever they were. However, they were concerned. You could read from that. Once, that once the occupation was over, the Japanese would not be able to continue the program because the school lunch program would need large amounts of food imports. Ah, Raphael, are we investing in the, in that um, Texas um, um, pig range? Okay, in I this think case, we definitely. Right now. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> you see, it's going to be big business for us. So wars are business. Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. And read the last sentence. It starts from Japan became accustomed to. Japanese became accustomed to eating animal protein that led. To... Liar. Raphael, why are you lying? Why don't you just say they're using nice words? Why don't you well, say they were Japan brainwashed became... into, <laughs> into eating, eating animal protein? Meat? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. If you don't say animal protein, right, right. that's yes. lying. Yes, yes. Eating pig meat, yes. And that led to that's the right. tremendous success for the U.S. meat industry, which it would experience years later. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> oh, now I just want you to think now. So now the thing is, there's um, what do you call it? There's around two billion Muslims, or one point eight billion. Uh, let's just show some amounts. Um, yes, the success from the war in 1945. Like it's it's almost been 70 years. Let's go through this, yeah? For example, yeah? You could read it from the fourth line down a bit further. So read it. Imports of? Imports of USB, for example, increased from 41 metric tons in 1968 to a high of 348,299 metric tons in 2000. You're trying to tell me that 50 years later, they're still making billions of dollars from these people in Japan? And then pork increased yeah. from about 8,000 to about 340,000. Wait, That's everyone crazy. got the message. Mm -hmm. Are you, uh, the year 2000, you're trying to tell me that 50 years later, you're still making billions? 
Raphael, you're, you're a proper scammer, you. <laughs> you mean your poor company you invested in, in Texas? So now le let me see now. Which religion is the biggest organized religion that is in the way of making billions of dollars that we're talking up to one quarter of the world's population doesn't eat its pork because of which religion? It's the Muslims, yeah. Damn. Raphael, you know, I'm going to invest in your pork company. I think we should, um, you know, pay the, um, you know, French administration, the German administration to make more weapons, keep ISIS going and all these other groups. Really oh, you mean you mean it can be refinanced only by hooking them on pork? Raphael, we need to get rid of this Islam. Can you imagine how much more money we're going to make if we're going to get uh, devastate the entire Middle well, East and the we got to make them eat pork, bro. No, because the thing is, I mean, the pork business is a good thing or it can be a, a Not big... just pork. Oh, Raphael, how many trillions yeah. is the alcohol industry and related right. industry? Right. Alcohol is, I think, even better. And then you have the <laughs> fake books, <laughs> no fake Let religion, fake this. rituals. Wait, Raphael, Raphael, I forgot. What do you call it? Yes, daddy's in, already, you know, he's uh, invested in many alcohol companies and he's got all these friends. Don't worry. Old people get homes, them. like you mentioned. This is a good one. Raphael, Old people's you homes. know what we've got to do? We've got to make sure that this Quran disappears. Or oh, Raphael, what do you call it? Yes, um, you know, the Muslims, they don't take all these banking loans so that they pay double for the mortgage. That's in another in interesting one. Uh, yes. All these banks, we're losing so much money. Daddy is losing money. Are you beginning to see why Islam is the biggest threat in the world? Mm -hmm. Ah, wait, Agenda 2030, what do they say? Yes, everybody will be happy. Yes. Why? Because you'll own nothing, or what do you mean? <laughs> but but um, you know about uh, Agenda yes, yes, 2030. Of course. Yes. So um, the thing is, that's when they want to... um. Um, get it started and they want it to happen that's they actually want this yes and the thing is how do you make sure people own nothing how many bankruptcies were there do, during um, the pandemic oh you're crazy of course how many people lost their homes during the pandemic couldn't pay the banks banks well, I, I wouldn't know but it's uh, the economy you is very know. bad anywhere especially now with yes. the oil crisis so also now the thing is the, the, the way society is um, what do you call it? Yes, they're going to own nothing and they're going to be so happy. Um, the thing is, um, property prices, um, for example, um, let me just see now. Um, it, uh, as far as I know, in a place like Kosovo or in Bosnia, you could buy land for um, 10, 20,000 euros oh, yeah. and you could build your own house how you want. That's in it. India, 10, you can 000. do it for a few thousand also. Yeah, there's many places in the world where you can do that, but not in Europe usually, yeah. or not in Central Europe. <laughs> uh, well, here in Europe, they all, they don't want this Islam. It's a threat. Yes, it's a threat to, to the banks. Yes, and the people, you know, they're so smart. That's why they let the banks take over. They let these people take over the entire food supply. I mean, do you know how much of a joke the food supply is? Um, let me just show you how much of a joke the food supply is yes now the farmers are protesting but another thing many people don't realize is that they're giving injectionations to um you know even the fruits and the vegetables so many of these people carry on eating here and then do you know what they've done right now yes um the thing is yes they're importing fruits and vegetable from a um, word you call it and um, let me just show you things like this when you see this you're going to think wolstein which idiot believes this i've been to portugal many times and i've noticed that there's something wrong yes they're, they're, they're just um going to turn around and say farming it's unproductive in europe it's cheaper to import from you know morocco algeria tunisia and africa and other places yeah because they want to make sure that they control food security so what you call it uh, uh, portugal it's so low in um uh, uh, producing fruits and vegetable there's all that land there mm -hmm. yeah and they're saying investment is is very low traditionally no they've been doing it for 50 years they planned this a long time ago all right yes 
and then they've made sure that the prices are too high, let the farmers protest they're just going to import from Brazil or Mexico or Morocco and Algeria. Yeah, falling sale prices because the supermarkets are buying from abroad, yeah. but then the Moroccan supermarkets are going to be buying from somewhere else. You see? Yes, because they, they're going to pretend it. Do you know what happened in Morocco? They're protesting in Morocco because of the um, farming protest. Do you know this? No, why? because they're saying, "Why are you exporting the produce and produce and mm -hmm. the uh, 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 and the and and the price is high here?" Mm -hmm. Yes. So then the thing is, do you know what the government is doing? They're importing from uh, from other uh, other countries. From China. You see? Oh, what? Oh my God. Oh, God knows. So what do you call it? Yes. So um, the thing is um, what do you call it? So there's um, um. When we see this, European farmers, it's not really farmers, it's big businessmen. They're buying everything from over there because the, the governments in Europe are thinking, we don't give a damn. We don't give a two F. We don't give a F for any of these um, farmers. You understand? Yes. And so they're dumping the many farmers are dumping it, but nobody cares. Yeah. They are not going to stop. They're going to control the food supply. They started a long time ago. You don't even know what a pig is. You don't even know where it originated from. I've I've st I've shown examples. We can't find pigs even in the Far East. We can't find them in North America. Remember, we did a video before. We can't we can't find pigs in Europe. Do you remember this? Do you remember? Yes. Yeah, we can't find them in South America. Where did this animal come from? Why does the Quran condemn it? Why do Jewish people not eat, eat it either? This is a serious question. Then, okay, carry on thinking you've got fresh fruits and everything. Carry on, yeah? Carry on looking down on this mysterious, strange book called the Quran, and it warns people saying that these people in power, it tells you, yeah, these people in power are plotting and scheming that they've got their plans and agendas. It tells you this in this strange book called the Quran, and then it tells you, don't pay interest and don't take it. Get out of this interest system. It tells you. It actually tells you this. Do you know that, Raphael? That's and I why... know that Islamic banking works differently. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and not only that, but um, um, the European colonial governments they set up many banks in the Muslim countries, but hardly anybody. You know what they do? They're giving out free bank accounts and everything in places right. like Morocco, encouraging students this that because nobody wants to... <laughs> nobody's really into the banking because they believe in cash. So now they're slowly try, trying to get people into whatever. And um, what do you call it? I'm just going to tell people now. Ah, 666. You all know, what does the Bible say about 666? The mark of the beast. Yeah, what, what the Bible actually says. Because um, this is in my new book. Um, it's, it's in my new book because many people, yeah, of course, you know, it depends who you know and what you know. Or, um, secrets of the Kabbalah. So it's in this book. I've explained it a bit more. So um, I'll, I'll, I'll give a basic Wikipedia translation. It's it's from the new book. I'm not going to give the secret away. You're going to have to read the book. Who do you think I am? Your dog or your slave or something? You learn something, then you don't give much charity. You've not changed the world. You haven't done many things. And then you're going to write pathetic comments. That was one of the major reasons why yeah, actually, I told you, Raphael, don't give the videos free. I said many people don't deserve it. Yeah, in case some people are cursing Raphael. Yes. So, by the way, it was me because I didn't like the comments. If somebody's going to say he's behaving like Israel collective punishment, okay. If the collective punishment should go put down comments and say something nice for a change, even the nice people don't comment. Thousands of people are watching the videos and they don't write anything. In the last video, just in YouTube, 3,800 viewers, and the video was uploaded in Facebook, other places, maybe another two, 2,000 people. So it's about five, 6,000 people. Well, anyway, what does it say in the Bible? You could, re you could read it. And he... And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in That's their enough. foreheads. Okay, so now all these people, yes, um, what, what you've seen many of these videos and these posts. What do they say straight away when they talk about the mark of the beast? Do they mention microchips straight away, yes or no? Yes. Wait, did it say microchip there or did it no, say no, a mark? No, no, it says mark. <laughs> ah, it didn't okay. change yet. It says mark. Ah, okay. 
the rest of this information is in the new book. Tough, tough, Raphael. Ooh. Because of these peasants who wrote bad comments, I'm not going to tell, the, tell you the rest. It serves those bad peasants right, yes? I know there's decent peasants out there, but the decent ones, you know, didn't even write a comment for one or two minutes, and they don't realize how long it took and everything to prepare all these things. Ah, since we've mentioned the 19 and people think that, uh, uh, people seem to think, oh, it's just a simple thing and it's it's um, not very important. What do you call it? Yes. So there is some donkeys and dogs who are commenting, saying, yeah, what about paleo Hebrew and all this crap? Yes. Ah. And I said, um, Arabic soldier, why don't these dogs go out there and study first before these dogs put a comment? Yes, because there are decent people who are really worried why we're alive, who really care about the world and there's good people out there. And these good people are going to be distracted and they're going to spend hours torturing themselves and studying for hours trying to find out what is this Paleo Hebrew? What are they talking about? Yes. So then David has to do this extra work. This Paleo Hebrew came from um, what do you call it? Phoenician and whatever, whatever, whatever. And then they show that this so-called Paleo Hebrew, Old Hebrew, Samaritan, Phoenician, it looks similar. Can you see it in the picture? Uh -huh. Yes. Yeah. Makes the connection between the three. Yes. So um, they're saying this is from the 1831 Encyclopedia America, Americana. But when we look at the printing press, we know that this Encyclopedia Americana is another fake. So then, what do you call it? When we try to find um, um, the first discovery of Hebrew in the Phoenician alphabet, you could read this yourself, and you'll see the same history. Read it. The first major. The first major discovery connecting the Phoenician alphabet and language with Hebrew occurred on January 19th. 1855. Stop, Raphael. Please put your glasses on. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. Well, 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 there's people listening to you here. What date does it say? January 19th, 1855. Are you sure? <laughs> yes. You mean they discovered it on January the 19th, 1855, that they proved the connection that the Phoenician and the Hebrew language is connected? January the 19th? Mm -hmm. Sure, this history is true. You believe this history now, don't you? Yeah, totally. <laughs> ah, you're... So you're beginning to see then now to prove that this paleo Hebrew and old Hebrew existed in the Middle East. Let's go through. I'm going to go through every single major discovery right now. And let's see. Does it sound like genuine history? history. So the first one's discovered on the 19th of whatever. Yeah. Uh, um, that first one is the sarcophagus found in Sidon. Now, the second one, you could read it. What's it called? The name? This yes, second, the one. second one is Meshe's steel inscription. Yes, also called the Moabite stone. When was it discovered? It was discovered in 1868. You mean to tell me they're telling us they didn't even know this old Hebrew existed until, um, you know, like 150 years ago? Is this what you're trying to tell me? Well, I guess most people spoke Yiddish, no? So. <laughs> ah. You mean, so that means they didn't uh, even know that old Hebrew existed until 150 years ago. And then they're telling us, we just found out that there was old Hebrew two, three thousand years ago. Yes. And here is a picture of the Meshe steel. They probably got it in some museum. God knows where. And then what do you call it? They're saying it is written in, in a variant of Phoenician and a, a variant of Paleo Hebrew, blah, blah, blah. They've made up the name Paleo Palestinian Hebrew, Paleo Hebrew, make sure we don't know what it is. And it proves the biblical story of um, the Moabites. That's what it proves. Yes or no? Yes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. And then the, the Ottoman Empire is gone, but they're lying about the Ottoman Empire. As we showed you before, we can't find this Ottoman Empire. Yes. Um, it was something else and had something to do with Germany. Yes. And the thing is, um, what do you call it? Yes. So let's go through this, um, 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 this steel or something or whatever crap that they're coming out with. Yes. Um, this Meshe steel. Yeah. Um, let me just send you. This is the official history that they found it in 1868. That after they found it, yes. What do you call it? Yes, the world found out about it. You could read the bottom 
paragraph that says F.A. Klein to George Groove. Do you want to read what he said? So about yes, uh, um, the bottom paragraph, F.A. Klein to George Groove. Yeah, so this was in... Uh, uh, F.A. Klein, oh, yes, of the that. of the Palestine Exploration Fund, Jerusalem, 23rd of March, 1870. Mm -hmm. As? As published, all right, now I see, in the Pall Mall Gazette of the 19th of April, 1870. So, it's like, because... It's first like you and me, we find a stone, we're not sure what it is. And then we know what it is and we declare it to the world on the 19th of April, 1870. So right. that's when the world discovered this Meshe Moabat steel. So next comes along. The next thing they're gonna say, the third thing with this ancient Hebrew, call it some mixture of whatever, whatever, is the Siloam inscription, you know, that um, tunnel, yeah, that's, oh, um, you know, yeah. there's a toilet sewage tunnel. Yeah, this is, um, before we go there, this is in my book, um, Jerusalem is in Europe. Yeah, people haven't read it. They're going to turn around and say, no, maybe it's ancient. Oh, that guy who's commented, how could you call him a dog or something? It's because he's not even checked that he's saying Paleo-Hebrew, our ancient Hebrew. Did he even check the top three? I'm telling you the top three discoveries. And I've just shown you that there's something wrong with them. Now, this other one, they found it in a sewage tunnel. And they're telling us, oh, we just found this in a sewage toilet tunnel. Yes. And what do they say about this mysterious in the sewage tunnel, which looks like a sewage tunnel? My book describes it. Yeah. And what do they call it here? Yes. It was discovered when? In 1880. And it's supposed to be ancient Israelite Hebrew inscriptions. Paleo-Hebrew or some garbage that they've invented the name yes and um what do you call it yes even if you don't want to know even if you're not looking for this history yes what do they all tell you for no reason what do they tell you about this inscription that they found it the inscription had been chiseled out of the rock about 19 feet from the siloam end ah wait a minute Raphael, please put your glasses on <laughs> Yeah, they, well, they, how many they feet? don't they don't help it's 19 feet why didn't they use meters why did they why does it mysteriously say on some websites meters or feet or um this and that because they keep changing it as long as it matches the 19. it's because the people who know the secret of 19 yes who've managed to figure it out or who know will know if it's genuine history or if it's fake and what is the 19 about i've explained it Yes, in my book, Secrets of the Kabbalah. Take it or leave it. Yeah, I'm not your slave for, for me to give it to you free. Sorry, it's available in many languages. So so um, the thing is, um, what do you call it? Yes. So the next thing, as we go down, they're going to say there's more Paleo-Hebrew to prove that, um, um, that um, <clears throat> there was um, he Hebrew Israelites <clears throat> living in this Palestine. Yes. Um, well, what's this one called? The geezer calendar the geezer calendar geezer calendar yes, yes. geezer geezer yes so they're saying they found it um wh where did they find it 30 yeah. miles from jerusalem ah yes so and what exactly is it a calendar it's a limestone tablet with a hebrew inscription yeah. written in the old hebrew alphabet yeah, so it's supposed it says to be it's a, a calendar. calendar. Okay, yeah, whatever this means. Okay, yeah. so now what's strange is that it's not just an ordinary calendar, Raphael. It's a Giza calendar. And what is this based on? How, um, what is this um, Giza calendar? How many years is it based on normally uh, in the cycle? Oh, it has a 19-year cycle. Oh, that's convenient. Are you sure? Wait, Raphael, didn't I tell you put your glasses on? The, uh, these people are just going to get a bit, little pissed off. Yes, I hope people look uh, at the screen uh, themselves. Wait, they can check for themselves what it says there. Ah, I'm pretty sure okay. it's 19. So now let's have a look more of this, you know, this these dogs who are commenting and saying paleo, Hebrew, pale, whatever or whatever. Oh, yeah, of course, there's going to be nationalists and um, other things. Israeli nationalists and Christian nationalists, evangelicals saying, hey, the story is in the Bible, it's true. Yeah, you know, sat there with their pizzas and their big bellies and saying, look, they found all the evidence. Yeah, sure, you know, 
carry on watching Sesame Street. Yes. So now look <laughs> at this. Here is another one they found in, in um, 1935. As you can see, I'm going from, from the 1908. They found the other one. Now, this is 1935. What's this called? It is a Lachish Ostracon. And this is a broken, a broken pottery fragments, which were discovered in 1935 in the ancient city of Lachish with Hebrew writing again in the old Hebrew alphabet. Ah, okay. So the thing is in the Hebrew writing in the old Hebrew alphabet. So now the thing is what many people don't know. Um, what do you call it? Yes. Let me just show you that they're telling you there was 18 at first. But um, eventually the final, they're going to turn around and say there was 19 and th there was three more and then there was one more. So there was 21 and then it made 22 total. Yes. And they can't make their mind up if there was 22 or not. Yes. And um, what do you call it? Yes. So they go through these things and the suspicious mathematics that I went through the deep discoveries and even even the analytic discoveries it's not even worth reading it's just suspicious and it's just a joke yes it, it, it's it's just a total joke yes so um the thing is i've been through it myself and then I, i've been to many other things and um so the thing is it's got something to do with the 22 hebrew letters actually i was going to mention it now but then guess what i turn on thought because of those evil comments and everything um people are going to have to buy this book just to find out why they found 18 and then three later and then one more why they found um 22 to make mm. it 19 and then three sorry Raphael. sorry i'm having to bully people am i beginning to be am i behaving a bit like daddy right now daddy doesn't want these peasants to know well but yeah i mean people Daddy's can make up their own minds no, that is going to no, be you would you would have to make a much bigger scam because uh, this is what this is the one thing I don't understand because when people listen to any of the interviews you give and even just one piece of information, you think I'm their slave or no, their dog? No, no, just let me finish. Just one piece of information you give can easily save thousands of whatever in time, in research, in investment, in and, books, and, and so on. People, what did they so ever give me? Please, did just, they give me, yeah. did they, do, you know, do you know when you gave the videos free, nobody even gave you one dollar or one cent. Never forget that. They didn't even say when you said, hey, if anybody wants to contribute. I was so shocked after four years of making videos. And I thought, what the hell? That's why I turned out and said, don't give them free anymore. Not to these peasants anyway. Yeah. Um, the thing is, under, unless if they start being kind, yeah, you know what I mean. It's like, it's like um, you could have put. It's like um, at first, remember when when I said put the videos at two euros or one euro, I said, hey, there's going to be if people paid. You didn't even get one person paying. I turn around, thought, what's going on? Well, anyway, they turn around and say that they found these Semitic seals with Hebrew writing on and other Semitic garbage in the Middle East. Yeah. Let's just show people what it's like with the paleo hue that look like rings or seals. So as you can see, as you can see, this is an example of these so-called seals that they're claiming that they found with Hebrew or paleo Hebrew or Phoenician Hebrew or whatever. Yes, saying this this is um, related. You can see it. So um, let's go back. People have written books on it, history on it, etc. You know, the West Semitic stamp seals and all these things yeah so i'm um, here have a look at these um, so-called stamp seals or whatever they found can you see it mm -hmm. yeah and they're showing that this is paleo hebrew and from there it developed to modern hebrew so the west semitic seals they found them yes um yeah so um what do you call it they've got a um, male names and female names you know somebody's writing their names and all these things so the thing is um you know of course people will will want to examine the history and then what do they tell us from the biblical archae archaeological society what do they tell us Raphael, about these women in the west semitic seals stamp seals reveals only 19 stamp seals with a female name oh please put your glasses on now it's easier now because well, it's not in in numbers but it's actually written out it says 19 yeah words but are you sure you could read it? 
Yes. Does it say 20? Are you not sure? 20 looks Maybe. very different to 19, so yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> are, you, are you sure? Oh, well. Well, as you can see, you know, there is something seriously wrong. So now then they're going to tell us that there's more Paleo-Hebrew. Yes, that they found more. We're going like in a um, date order and, um, you know, the big findings and everything. Let's look at this. These are the Murasu, Murasu, um, what do you call it, archive cuneiform tablets that they found between 1888 and 1900. It looks so historical. Yes, doesn't it? Looks uh, looks mm -hmm. like whatever. Yes. So um, what do you call it? They, they found them in central Babylonia in Nippur. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so it, it looks um, um, amazing, yes? So, um, what do you call it? Let's have a look at this. It's supposed to show the biblical wars and things like this, Babylonia, history and everything. But um, let's ha have a look at these tablets or seals or whatever. Read through it. However. However, seal impressions on the tablets are abundant and 19 seals used by Judeans are also attested. Uh, uh, Raphael, please stop making a mistake. It says 20, doesn't it? No, again, it's written out in words. It says 19. You mean, you mean that they found these Murasu seals and 19 of them were being used by the Judeans? Mm -hmm. Something is wrong here. Are you sure? That's what it says, yeah. Well, uh, anyway, abounds. the thing is, um, what do you call it? As you can see, it's a total joke. Yes. Indeed. And um, for, for example, um, let's have a look. Um, even today, we we study, um, what do you call it? Um, you know, they're going to say the Middle East, the ancient Hebrews were there. And um, what do you call it? Let's have a look at um, the modern Orthodox religion. Yes. Even when we study the history of the Orthodox religion in the 19th century, remember, they built that so-called Orthodox um, synagogue, not, I was going to say church by accident, yeah, mm -hmm. in Jerusalem on the 19th. Yes. Well, um, here is, um, what do you call it? It traces its roots to what's the rabbi's name? Which rabbi? M modern Orthodoxy? Azriel Hildesheimer and Samson Raphael Hirsch. Yes. Samson who? Samson Raphael Hirsch. Yes, so so um, the thing is, when modern Orthodox religion was like basically invented or created, many people were against it. So um, so, uh, um Samson, let's deal with Samson, for example. So what, what did Samson write in defense of this Orthodox Judaism? You could read it yourself. Oh, under the pseudonym Ben Uziel, nineteen letters is a defense of Orthodox Judaism. Hmm. So he wrote how many letters to defend Orthodox Judaism? Did you say you are, where are your glasses, Raphael? How many letters did he write? I'm not sure if it's a number or if it's a book title or something, but in any case, it's 19 letters. Mm -hmm. What? I'm sure it should say 20 there. Yeah. yeah. Again, I it's written it out, be... so it's 19. Yeah. Maybe you don't know how to read English. <laughs> yeah, then we'd have a serious problem. <laughs> Yeah, maybe maybe that's what it is. Um, what do you call it? So now let's go through. I just thought I'd mention that because it's here. So now they found more Paleo Hebrew. What is this object called? It is an Ammonite inscription. Ah, where where did they find it? In 1966, an inscription was discovered in Amman, Jordan with an Ammonite ah, inscription. So they found it in Jordan. So this proves the history of the Bible, the Ammonites who were fighting there, things like this. So now let's go to the, uh, uh, you know, Institute of Biblical Archaeology by Armstrong. Yes, and um, what do you call it? Describe this Ammon Citadel inscription, please. Those are the 26 centimeter tall and 19 centimeter wide artifact. Is the... Please, Raphael, you read it wrong. It says <laughs> 20, doesn't it? Yeah, no, they didn't round that one. 19 centimeter wide artifact. Is are the... you sure? Yes, I'm sure. Uh, it is the you... earliest okay. dated okay, Raphael, Ammonite now, inscription. Anyway, mm -hmm. you've got to, you're beginning to see the point. The point is, look, I just showed you a few things like suspicious history. It's totally suspicious. 
that they're telling us the ancient Romans wrote this poetry and it's 19 lines, 19 BC, 19 paragraphs, 19 columns, 19 this. Now they're telling us they found Paleo-Hebrew and then related languages and everything. It's 19 this, 19 that. Yeah, and it's the same, um, you know, I put it in my book, Ancient Greece. If anyone who hasn't read it, they still won't get the idea of it. Yes, um, it's in my book, Ancient Greece did not exist. And in the book, um, you know, Ancient Egypt did not exist. If you haven't read those books, then still you're going to be skeptical. Yeah, and to people who are genuinely nice, please, you know, um, you know, Raphael's doing hard work, at least leave a nice comment for him, guys. Yeah. And, you know, all the other people who are just nasty, go away. Yeah. Ah, by the way, I've removed the nasty people from my Facebook onto my Facebook group because there's um, too many of them. It's like um, they, they seem to say, oh, you think you know history or something. I'm not thinking or anything or saying anything. I'm just pointing it out. Yes. That I'm um, what do you call it for no reason. Look, you just open up Wikipedia. You just look on Wikipedia. And what does it tell you here? Yes. For no reason, what does it say this? Does anyone need to know? Look, why didn't they write it in inches? They put it in brackets here. Have a look. The yes. Ammonite inscription. For no reason, they want to tell you it's 19 centimeters. Yeah. They want to tell you. They want you to know this. Yes. So what is this? Yes. Yeah. What is this? And then the scam with the Paleo-Hebrew. Everybody's noticed this. Yeah, even if historians deny it. Like, that's why I said the reverse of the writing. The first five letters of the so-called alleged Hebrew old alphabet, Paleo-Hebrew or whatever. Yes, and then the first five letters of the old Greek. What does that look like to you, Raphael? Looks like it's the same, but in reverse. <laughs> no, Raphael, put your glasses on. Did you just say it looks like it's the same and it's backwards? Yes, indeed. Did you just say that? Yes. No. Uh, did you just say that? Yes. That, uh, that the Hebrew looks backward to the old Greek? Are you sure? Yes, it looks pretty obvious, at least from that You mean image. they reversed it? Is that all they did? Mm hmm Yeah, and then remember when you went through my book, you know, Jerusalem is in Europe. Yes, that that book, yes, explains the invention of the modern Hebrew language after the 1880s. And that book explains that modern Hebrew has only been invented really. Therefore, the Bible must be even maximum 200 years old. Because And then uh, many of the words were actually Arabic. Remember, we went through this? Or did you forget? Yes. Mm -hmm. That Hebrew came from Arabic? So that's why I turn on said that when they created Latin and all these other languages, they just reversed the Arabic. Yeah. You see, everything points to this evidence. Yeah, but no, some of these people are gonna say, David made these things up himself. Ah, by the way, there is something that I found here. Um, what do you call it? That's interesting. Yes, um, you can actually um, just play this for a minute and um, listen to it yourself. It's actually very scary, yes? Because the thing is, many people are seeing these things. It's 22 seconds. Play it and then tell me what's this guy saying. It's very scary. I think the world should know about these things. Yes? We want to see Sharia here, and it will be. The flag of La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, will be, inshallah, on the White House. The American people are waking up now. Allah does say that the whole world eventually will be under his, his ruling. The world will come down to where everybody obeys. Uh, the law is not simple as that. We will force Islamic Sharia, inshallah. Well, they are talking about the introduction of Sharia law, whatever the Sharia law in is. America and all these other streets. And um, what do you call it? What does this guy look like? Yeah, he just looks like a, a typical Muslim with a beard and all these. Well, could, 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 also, it could also be an actor. How, how could you know? It's a TV report, I guess, no? Okay, I I'm just going to play this loud. Yeah. We want to see Sharia here, and it will be. The flag of La ilaha illallah want to see Sharia here, and it will be. Okay, now, so the thing is, there's all these videos going around. Yes, because I've mentioned Islam, so of course um, I'm going to speak about it. Here is this guy, yeah, just some clown, yeah, some from somewhere. So the thing is, what many people are not aware of, 
Yes, if I told them this, they, they probably won't believe me immediately. But this man actually is an actor. Yeah. And um, he probably goes to mosques and other places. He hangs around outside them. And um, the thing is, he's been preaching for about 10, 20 years. And many, he's got, he's got an American accent. Did you notice? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you noticed that. Um, but even if he doesn't, it accent. could still be an actor. <laughs> Oh no, he's he's definitely an actor because the thing is, um, what do you call it? I found out found out. But the thing is, there's thousands of these people. Yeah. So as you can see, this guy looks like a Muslim and everything. But the, um, the thing is, now it's even worse because there's something strange going on in the media and all around the world. Now this person is speaking this year. He's in many cities in America. He makes sure he's standing in public. Have you got him? Have you got him on screen so that people yes, can see yes. with his beard? And yes, glasses he looks quite and stereotypical or whatever one would say. Arabian hat he's got on. He looks like yeah, stereotypical Muslim. And he says, we're going to bring Sharia law to America. We're going to take over this country. We're going to put it, replace it in the White House, everything. And it looks like everyone's going to imagine he's a Muslim. So now the thing is, yes, the same guy, what do you call it? I remember seeing him 20 years ago. So that's when I realized now that the, the people in power, the um, new world, the new world um, government has actually got thousands, thousands of actors all over the world. And these actors, I don't know what they're going to try to do. There's the war in Gaza. Now just play this video. These are the brothers of Revolution Muslim. We tell you Muslims to rise up. They are recruiting just outside New York's 96th Street Mosque. Shut the Quran command the Jew. Disavow and make hatred and enmity between democracy, between nationalism, between secularism. And that you see Obama as the enemy he really is. That you see the United States as the enemy it really is. Youssef al khattab a Jew who lived in Israel and abruptly converted to Islam, and Yunus Abdullah Muhammad, also a convert, both born and raised in the United States, a country whose way of life they say they hate. And if you are not a Muslim, they count you as a disbeliever. Their mission? To terrorize you. We're commanded to terrorize the disbelievers. And this is a religion, like We're I said. Commanded to terrorize the in disbelievers. The Quran says very clearly in the Arabic language, language Torhibuna. This means terrorize them. It's a command from Allah. So you're commanded. It's a terrorize to terrorize them. Terrorize. Doesn't mean anybody. You doesn't define believe. terrorism as going and killing an innocent civilian. That's what you are. You... I define terrorism as making them fearful, so that they think twice before they go rape your mother or kill your brother or go onto your land and try to steal your resources. It is that jihadist version of Islam which allows them to conclude the killing of American soldiers overseas is justified, that the attack of 9-11 was also justified, and then an attack on almost any American is justified. Americans will always be a target and a legitimate target until America changes its nature in the international arena. In separate and disturbing interviews, both look to one man as the true living model of Islam. Osama bin Laden. I love Osama bin Laden. I, wallahi, I love him. <laughs> like, I, I can't begin to tell you because I haven't seen that he's really done anything wrong from the Sharia. I love him, like, more than, more than I love myself. What they want is U.S. forces to be defeated for a Muslim holy land stretching from China to Rome. And yes, they yearn for the day Israel will vanish. So you would like Israel to be bombed? Jews to I, well I think that's do you think that's a, a rational comeback I'm asking I'm, you I, I would like to see Israel wiped off the map I would like to see a mushroom cloud over it but before that I'd like to see the people guided and I'd like them to go back to their original countries where they're from they may seem crazy to you but you are not their target audience the FBI has assigned agents to watch them to monitor their website and perhaps more importantly watch those who are viewing and listening now, the thing is, the same guy is stood outside mosques in New York and other places 20 years ago. Yeah. Are, are you watching the video? Yeah, play both mm -hmm. videos. Yes. 
Now, the thing is, this was on CNN. It. It's a ter it is that jihadist version of is he American? Is he one man. Now, the thing is, um, I've, got his, I've got him here. He's like 20 years younger. So the thing is, uh, you know, it's like he's being paid and it's his job full time. If he's still doing it 10 or 20 As years later. That's the truth. If I've got the numbers wrong, it could be 10 years later. Will, will vanish. So you would like Israel to be bombed? Jews to I, well, I think that's. Do you think that's a, a rational comeback? I'm asking like them to go back to. Who are not their target audience? The FBI has assigned agents to watch them to monitor. The I'd like to see. The you would like Holy Land stretch more than more than. Mm -hmm. Both look to one man as the true living model of Islam, Osama bin Laden. Or, or kill your brother. Anybody who's a man. And if you're to Islam. And he now here is the story about this man. Yusef Al-Khattab, a Jew who lived in Israel and abruptly converted to Islam, and Yunus Abdullah Muhammad, also a convert, both born and raised in the United States, a country like, Al-Khattab, a Jew who lived in Israel and abruptly converted to Islam, and Yunus Abdullah Muhammad, also a convert. They're both new Muslims. Uh, it's ridiculous. Muslims. It's ridiculous. And one of them, um, uh, uh, um, he lived in Israel. But now when they said this, that's going to make people think that the Jewish people are behind this. But listen to the rest. Both born and raised in the United States. Born and raised in the United States. American accents. So it's like he was paid to probably go and live in Israel, maybe one year, two years or something. Yeah. And they will say, say that he was a Zionist or something. And now he's come back and he's to, um, mysteriously, he's become Muslim when he came back from Israel as a Zionist. And then he's Jewish. And then now he's become an extremist Muslim and they want to bring down the White House. What does that sound like to you? Paid sounds agents? like a script joke. That they're standing in the middle of New York, screaming their heads off. They're not afraid to get arrested. They must have big backing. They must have big backing. You see? Yes. So that's why I tell people, be careful. Yes. Don't believe things what you see. Another thing, for example, I don't like saying this to people, but um, the Palestinian Authority is lying about the population of Gaza. Let me tell you what they're telling you. Um, the population of, of um, um, Gaza, Gaza Strip, they're telling you, is 2 million people. So let me just show you this. It's like they're telling you there's 2 million people. <clears throat> but what they don't tell you is that um, if people are, if people have left Gaza in the last 20 or 30 years and they're Palestinian and they live somewhere else in America or in Germany or somewhere else, yes, they still count them as a Gazan citizen. Did you know this? Oh, wow. Yes. Yes. So this is something that really got to me. Yes, just in the last 10 years um, from Gaza, um, a quarter of a million people are, are supposed to have left. Um, what do you call it? Yes, and the thing is what many people don't realize is that, um, what do you call it? Um, let me just show you. I didn't realize this until a friend from Israel. He turned around and told, um, told me that there's a mass Palestinian protest in America. And I didn't realize that um, there's mass Palestinian protests. Um, um, I, I thought, no, that, that can't be real. And uh, because I didn't ever imagine that um, like 20 years ago. Um, so um, the thing is, um, what do you call it? Yes. Um, now in the United States, just in the United States, including the people who are waiting for their, um, um, for their citizenship, and um, things like this and new arrivals and um, things like this. There's about uh, US and Canada. There's about just in the US, they say 170,000. Um, what do you call it? Yes, we've got um, um, what do you call it? Um, their papers and then in Canada and those who are waiting for the papers, there's a quarter of a million in the United States. When did they get there? How did they get out of Gaza? And what is the real population of Gaza and the West Bank? It's like the Palestinian Authority. It's actually exaggerating the death rate. I spoke about Israel. Yes, I did. I even showed the atrocities. I showed, um, what do you call it? Yes, 
um, what they're doing to children. Yes, it's wrong. Israel is kidnapping children. But also I'm going to speak up and show that they're lying about um, the number of people. Just in the last 10 years, about a quarter of a million people have left from Gaza. And um, there is something that um, uh, I'm going to point out. Um, the thing is because now um, many people, it's becoming a bit of a joke that um, in England especially, um, I've noticed, I've just come back here and I've noticed that um, there's um, many people who are driving to London every weekend, paying like 200 euros for fuel to London and back and spending 100, 100 euros for, for the day protesting in London. They're spending 300 euros, they're buying a flag for 10 euros, things like this. But when it comes to like sending 200 euros to um, poor people in poor Muslim countries, they're not going to send a penny. Yeah, but even here, is it? Do we know how many of these protesters aren't actually getting paid? Also, in in different cases. No, no, no. no. I've actually met many people myself All right. who are Indian local people. I, I since I come back and I turn, I thought, what is this? Yes, jumping up and down, and you won't help anybody or something. So, like actual middle class people that still have money to spend, they rather go there and protest than to contact cars, someone and people. help them directly. It's more like a day out and like a festival. I turn around and thought it's a joke. Right, yeah. Yes, sure. Uh, and then the thing is, um, uh, and then they're supposed to be Muslim. Are they worshipping this flag, Palestinian flag? Then they're going to uh, pull down somebody who's got an Israeli flag. Some is some um, British people on the other side who've never been to Israel, who've never seen a Jew in their life, are holding um, the Israeli flag because they're um, racist, racist against Muslims or something. And then I'm turning around thinking, is this for real? What's wrong with these people? Are they insane? It's like if you're trying to say you care about these poor people or something, why don't you fly to Israel? Yeah. And then go to the West Bank. I mean, Israel's like England. They're not going to beat you up or something as long as you be polite and go there and go and give charity. Yes. And another thing, there's a lot of fraud going on in a lot of these so-called, um, what do you call it, bombings that Israel is doing in Gaza. I noticed this two months ago, but I'm not going to stay silent. I want you to have a look at this. I mentioned it to you, remember in private? Do you remember? Yeah, in yes. private. But now I've just sent you a picture of a road that they're saying that this road got bombed by the Israelis. Okay, it got bombed. Now what I would like, what I'm going to do is this, this, this um, street or whatever district here, yes, notice that there is no decoration and um, there's nothing there to even hold the windows there many of the buildings didn't even have anything for a window like i've just enlarged it and because i know i've constructed properties for people and i know how how um, it, um, it's like the south of france or like um spain that um it's warm there so many of the palestinians have the wooden things there's not even anything for a wooden connection for a window to be there it's almost like many of the buildings are actually empty but others that you can see that um did have windows some of them do but um half of the pictures that i've looked at that you could see don't even have windows that here did have windows in that building over there in the background Yes, but there's no decoration that you can see that upstairs there's windows on the same building when we go downstairs that you can see that there was nothing there that um, it looks a bit whiter there. I'm going to enlarge the wider part there and then you, you can see that there was nothing in that building anyway because a lot of the people have left in the last 10 years. That's another thing nobody is talking about. Yes, there's a bit of a scam going on. And the thing is, I know many people will turn and say, what do you call it? Yes, or oh, David, um, what do you call it? You spoke um, against the atrocities. Um, um, what do you call it? But um, the thing is, what many people don't know is that the Palestinian Authority and um, their affiliates and all these people, yes, um, what do you call it? A lot of them are thieves. Um, they're just stealing money. Well, it seems yes. very simple. Like everyone in power, no matter on which side, is scamming their own people and, and yeah, yes. <laughs> making and, them fight um, against each other. Thing. Remember when I said to you, um, as, if, as if nobody is noticing, I, I don't know how dumb you could be, that, um, what do you call it, um, Armenia gets invaded in Karabakh. Yes, Azerbaijan says it's its property. And um, 100,000 people have lost their homes or minimum 50,000. But then the Azerbaijanis in the last 30 years, 
um, what do you call it, millions of their people had to go. And then um, the thing is, um, what do you call it, it's a frozen conflict. And 19 days later was the Hamas attack, which is totally, it's clear to me that, um, what do you call it, America cannot supply the weapons directly. So Israel supplied the weapons, yes, on behalf of the Americans that they're pretending it went via there. Yeah, so um, the thing is, what we, what we could turn around and do is um, I've looked at many of these. Just look at this. Look at the fraud here. It's just absolute fraud that many of the buildings that have been blown up and there's other buildings in the background. Somebody's just built them. Yes, like half built. So there's no window, nothing. Waiting for um, an Israeli rocket um, to land there. That, um, the thing is, when you have a look at some of these buildings, yeah, you can see there's no furniture inside whatsoever that um what do you call it yes that many of these buildings weren't complete as if they were just built in the last two years or three years that somebody's just going to blow it up mm -hmm. on purpose that it just doesn't make sense like do they have like do they have insurances in that area because that would be an interesting thing to look at you know look, the thing is they found gas there there's other things and another thing let me just show you why is egypt not opening its borders Ah, <laughs> I like that one. Let me tell you about Egypt, my dear sir. I'll only tell you half because, what do you call it, the rest of the story is in that new book, Secrets of the Kabbalah. Yes, because many people seem to think that a country named Egypt exists or a country named Israel exists. By the way, it's um, U.S. trained forces that are inside Gaza, in case people are thinking it's somebody else, U.S. and many European others. Yeah. But um, let me just um, find this Egypt thing and you will be totally surprised, my dear sir, yeah, of the scam that's going on. It's, it's just a total scam. Yeah, you know, and um, the, there's many fake photos going around like um, this man is miraculously carrying. Um, how many people is he carrying? Yes. How many people? Oh, at least one, two, three, four. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah, so the thing is, of course, bad things are happening, yes, but the thing is, you know, I don't want to lie and exaggerate things, you know, um, for one side and be one-sided. Uh, no way I'm not, because I've got a friend um, who's American, she's in Israel right now, she's Jewish, and the thing is, she's just talking about the atrocities that are going on. It's like she won't shut up about it, and she's in Israel, and um, the thing is, she's posting it on our Facebook and everything. So um, the thing is, there's, um, you know, there's good people out there. You can't be on one side. It's because um, I don't want my Israeli friends or Jewish friends saying, hey, you chose a side. I'm sorry, I'm not going to choose a side. Yes? Yeah, Raphael? So the thing is, um, many of the buildings are empty and they're showing us like blown up streets and other things. And many of the buildings, the walls are broken and you can't see any furniture or anything inside them. Uh, the thing is, many of the photographs just don't don't make sense. Yes, that are coming out of the bombings of the streets that you could see. Many of the buildings are actually empty. I've sent you many more pictures. People should actually look out for these things and not fall for everything. Yeah, There's and, and especially going. it's now very known with the recent developments in AI and so on. Really, every image yeah. has to be examined. There's a lot of propaganda exactly. going on. Yes. Yeah, uh, and the and the thing is. Um, they're saying 30,000 deaths. It could be higher. It could be higher, but it could be lower. It's like there's propaganda on both sides, and um, I'm thinking it's a lot lower. Yes, because I've got no evidence to prove this, but um, there's another family I was supporting in Palestine, and um, they claimed that a member of the family died. And then check this out. And from Gaza to the West Bank, you can't go there. Israel's in the middle. And so the person's just died and something like this and everything. I can confirm it. And then another member of the family has the WhatsApp a week later. And then I said, how did you get it? And they said, I'm in the West Bank. And I know WhatsApp, you can't activa activate it without the code. So how did they activate it without the code? Yes, in, uh, in um, you know, another region, you see? So that's when I thought they're lying to me. Um, um, they lied. You see, so and that's um, a Palestinian family that I was supporting. This is another one. This is the first time I'm mentioning it. I was actually hurt by that. 
I was actually totally hurt by it, but I, I'm not going to stay silent. Even if the Palestinians are the victims, I'm going to find out that there is lies going on. So people should be careful. Yes, it's a total disaster and a total joke what's going on there. There's no way I'm going to stick up for it. Yes. And the thing is, yes. Um, what do you call it? Yes. There is something going on. And the reason why I'm saying there's something going on and it's got something to do with not the Palestinians or the Arabs. It's got something to do with that place called Mecca in Saudi Arabia. I will explain to you, for example, in America, it was just a small settlement, wasn't it? When the British set up mm -hmm. or the Europeans when Officially, they went there. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, they made contracts and laws um, um, every year with them um, saying we're not going to expand with the so-called local Indians or whatever. Yes or no? The Spanish did the same. Yes or no? Yes, in official yeah. history, from what I understand, they make treaties and stuff, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. And um, in the end, um, what do you call it? Yes. Um, they, they surrounded these people. They took all the lands and they've got them in small areas in America. Right. Yes. Mm hmm. That's what's happening in the Middle East. And this is just the first 60, 70 years. There's another 100 or 200 years to go. So today they're shouting free Palestine or about Gaza. Soon they're going to be shouting free Mecca, free Medina. Mm -hmm. Yes, everyone knows about the Greater Israel Project. But anyway, the thing is, it's to do with the number 19 and why this Kaaba is so important to the people in power to the Masons or to these other people, it's very important to them. For them, the Kaaba means something. That's why it's called Kabbalah. And that's why everyone says the Kabbalah is the Illuminati and they're the ones who are ruling. So if there's any Muslim viewers and you want to figure it out, why it was 19 days later after Karabakh, Karabakh was a frozen conflict. And to the Muslim leaders, Karabakh was very important. Yes, because they've been fighting there for um, like two, 200 years in that region. Yes, 100, 150 to 200 years. For them, Karabakh meant more, to the Turks anyway. And to anybody who knows the history of the Muslims in the last 200 years, Karabakh would be, could, would be classified as more important. Nothing to do with the death rate or anything. There's been lots of deaths over there in, uh, for both sides, for the Armenians and everything. I can't believe that, um, you know, um, that the world um, ignored what happened to Armenia. Yes, um, you know, it, it's actually a disaster. But then the world caused this conflict in the first place with Armenia. The, uh, the people of the world um, caused it so what else can I say? But um, let me just send you um, more information and um, more clear information about why Egypt won't open the border, because many people have got no idea and they're imagining things. So the reason why Egypt won't open up, it's because, let's say, there is the Bering Bank. And the, they'll give you a fake history of the Bering family. So when the British occupied Egypt, this is in my new book, Secret of Kabbalah, but I'll give you a bit, little basic. Yes, um, what do you call it? Yes. Um, they set up like the bond market to set up to create the Bank of Egypt and um, things like that. So they opened up the National Bank of Egypt. This is why Egypt won't open the borders, because these people, they control both sides. With the, you could read it yourself. The National Bank of Egypt, who opened it? With the blessings of Whitehall in London and Lord Cromer in Cairo, Sir Ernest Cassell put up 50% of the National Bank of Egypt's founding capital. No, this cannot be true. I am Arab. I am from the Middle East. I am Egyptian. Our country. This cannot be your bank. You, you are British. You're trying to tell me this is your bank? No, we are Arabs. We love our Palestinian brothers. This cannot be possible. Are you trying to tell me that you control me and you control them? You mean you control both sides? Then you control the media? Then you say we don't open the border? You mean you close the border because you control the bank? You mean this is all about the money? Is this what you mean? Mr. British Raphael, answer the question. Mm -hmm. Yes, this, this is how it's appears the only thing i'm a little bit confused by then is 
does Egypt, for example, use Islamic banking? I'm not, I don't know. So do they also play uh, both uh, sides uh, in this uh, game or? Ah, uh, since you've asked um, the answer about Islamic banking and what the, what the colonialists did. Yes, um, it's in my new book, Secrets of the Kabbalah. <laughs> You'd like to know and you want the world to know, well, they can read it in the book. Yes. I mean, I'm not their slave or their servant that I have to tell them that I tell them many things. And then many people write horrible things. They don't even contribute to you for three, four years. They didn't give you one cent or one euro. Do they even know how long it's taken? Oh, by, by the way, while we're recording, you had to wait for me half an hour in the beginning. Then I went for a break, this, that. Then we stopped the recording. Then I had to find these things many times. People think that we're just talking for two hours and you just recorded it. And these papers, I just sent them Google from my backside. It all just magic magically appears on YouTube, oh, David, you know? Don't, don't you know, David? Yeah. They're going to take from David's brain like magic. And then what did they give me? Yeah. Many people don't even say thank you. Thousands of people, whatever. I've got hundreds of thousands of followers in my groups and these things. Many people just download many books and many things that I put thousands of people they don't even say thank you did you know this many many people that do say thank you i thank you to those people um but i'm saying many people don't even say thank you yes yeah, it's actually people are strange do you know one person for example today one person turned around and said your new book you've got to pay for it and i said how come it's so expensive do you know what when the other 22 20 books came out i gave them him free on promotion he's on my facebook he never said thank you once. Do you oh, boy. yeah. Yo, yeah. Hi, can I have your latest book, David? Yeah, I just sent it in forward. Yeah, or I had somebody else send it forward. Yeah, I've got somebody else on my Facebook, like 500 messages um, the day before yesterday. Yes, for the new book. And you know what? I'm thinking some of these people never even said thank you. Mm. Do you know that? that that's what the world's like and then they expect you to you know they're asking why is he talking like that sometimes yeah and then um you know and then they will say something um be nationalistic or uh an islamist or even evangelist or something yeah and then oh there's some other people david some don't threaten my belief system by exposing lies in history I want to keep my belief system. <laughs> That's the well, thing. I it's difficult for people, you know? <laughs> yeah, many people I've noticed, some people who come, they want to turn around and say, oh, all world history is a lie apart from mine, from my side of the world. And then they're requesting saying, can you talk about this particular history because they think it's true? Well, anyway, the thing is, um, uh, Egypt, yes, for example, yes, many people are saying, ah, Israel is a puppet of the people in power. So is Egypt. Now, the thing is, it's because nobody's ever had a look. Remember, I, we went through the video, um, Jamal Abdel Nasser, Gamal Abdel Nasser, the Egyptians yes. say, yeah, the British army is there, but they mysteriously invaded Israel. Yes, they're so, everywhere, yes. Uh, so now I will explain to you what's going on. So we got, um, what do you call it, the Bering family and Lord Cromer, who are in Egypt. Then guess who we've got in, in Israel, the Rothschild family. Then on Jordan, on the other side, we got another English family or claim to be English, and um, whatever, yes, who have um, set up the banking in Jordan. <laughs> are you beginning to see what's going on? Yeah. That these bankers are fighting each other and many other things, like why won't Jordan open its borders? Why won't Jordan give passports to the Palestinians? Yes, and then there is many people who are trying to say, Arabic is sacred. Well, for um, this time, I won't give the game away, but if they want more information about Arabic, yeah, um, I showed you before, but I'm um, let the viewer see it. Now, what number do you, what's this symbol for first? It's Allah, yes? So what, yes. Um, this Allah symbol, when you just rotate it a little, what number do you see? It's the 33. 33rd degree? Aha. Uh -huh. So who do you think created this symbol, Raphael? Daddy and his friends. Many people seem to think that this symbol turned up just naturally and it's come overnight. And somebody's going to say, ah, but he's rotated it. That's not correct. Okay, if it's not rotated, why is that symbol? Why and where did this symbol come from? Nobody can explain that. Ah, oh, some people can. 
Uh, maybe I can, but I'm not going to do it um, um, right now. Um, we'll have to leave it for some other time. Well, most of the information is in this new book about the modification of even the Arabic alphabet. Yes, so it's in the new book. That's why this new book is important. It goes to many things. It goes to the uh, modification of the Hebrew alphabet. It actually goes through uh, many things. Um, um, it, it goes to specific stories in the Old Testament and, it, and the New Testament. It goes through them in detail of, of um, what is going on with these numbers, 19 and 33, that you're even in, seeing it in the symbols. That um, There's actually more going on, but um, the thing is, so that's why it's um, a very important book. Yes, and so it's like... Um, this book uh, talks more uh, about the, it also shows the, um, the invention of Judaism and the invention of Christianity. Yes, modern Christianity is only um, um, two, 300 years old. The Bible is on, only 200 years old. Yes, that's when they compiled it and put it together with stories talking about history in the past. Yeah, the Quran is most definitely older than the Bible. So now let's have a look at um, in the year 1910. Here is a photograph of Mecca. What do you see? Yes. Does that building look old to you? Yeah, that was the next thing we would be getting into. Exactly. No, it doesn't How look old? doesn't look old to me. It could be very new. I can't be sure. Ah. Ah, it, what, um, it doesn't look old to you? Ah, okay. So it's hard to tell because it just looks black from this angle. So it's, it's not difficult. difficult to tell. So now they've told you that Muslims have been going to this place for 1,400 years. I want you to tell me now, um, what do you call it? Saudi Arabia keeps records because they um, make a visa or things. How many people enter? How many people went to Saudi Arabia to Mecca in 1920? Only 60,000. And that's a little bit low. Um, uh, well, uh, that, that's how many people who did the pilgrimage. So 10,000 of these people must be locals. The local population was 100,000. Uh, no, or maybe even 200. I've forgotten. So now when you remove the local population, how many people do you think came from all over the world? Well, nobody, basically. <laughs> yeah, and we're talking, we're talking 1920. And um, I want you to uh, no, the people went. We've got photographs of it. But now that we've got photographs, I'm going to kill people's fantasies. Yes. Now the thing is, now the thing is, um, have a look at this photograph. You see people here in 1909, and they're going to tell us these people are walking around Mecca. Yes. I want you to look at it properly and enlarge it. Yes. And then I want you to tell me, are they actually walking around or is this photograph photoshopped? Same mm -hmm. like many of the photographs in Europe of people walking on the streets. Can you clearly see it? I, I'm looking at it on my 32-inch um, um, television screen. What are you looking at it, at it with? Well, it's not that large of a screen large enough but i wouldn't without analyzing it can't further you see, can't you see that um the uh, um, those people aren't actually there that they've just added them on it's okay it's, well you can see by the cool. probably through the shadows does it yes. uh, um wait wait i'm just going to show you and you'll see that the people don't match and even the feet don't match and the size of the people have a look at this picture that is 100%. You can see his foot, their feet are not even on the floor. Not only that, in that photograph, you could see that, um, what do you call it? Yes, that the floor is smooth. Yes. Now, I will show a better photograph of that place. And you will notice that there's actually a carpet there. But we cannot see the carpet in that picture. Yes. It's like um, they have carpets there and other things. You can't see it. There's many pictures that you will notice that are actually photoshopped. I mean, the other problem yes. is if we are being perfectly honest and assuming the idea of potential manipulation because of the way the, the Kaaba looks today and the way the picture is done, even that could just easily be inserted and could be whatever. Also, what the, hell? the number of people who are going to Hajj. Also, the tower in the then, back looks strange. And then what do you call it? Here is the Hajj in um, 1930. 
How many people do you see? These are serious things. Well, yes. that's also now, not um, many the people. Thing is, there's caravans going, another thing. So now the question is, when was this had set up and organized? So these things, like um, the thing is, what was original Islam? And as we mentioned before, what do you call it? Yes. And um, the people um, in, in um, Germany, they called many of these Jewish people were called Muslims or Muslims. Why? You see? So that's why I brought this up. It's because a lot of this information is in the new book. Yes, because many people are asking, what is the new book about? It, it goes, it talks about, um, what do you call it? More about these things and about the, the falsification of the history of Christianity and of the history of Islam. How old is, it, is modern Islam? This is a serious question. Why is there only like, um, what do you call it? Not many people going to this Hajj or Mecca what do you call it? Um, we're talking in 1920s, 30s. Why? When was this Hajj system set up? Who set it up? How did they set it up? Where did the Muslim history books come from? Yes, there, there's many other things. And not only this, um, my new book also explains um, the clock that we're using, you know, the 24 hour clock. Yes. yes. Believe it or not, it's based on the number 19. Did you know this? Totally. Can, can you see it? Show me. Let's see, Raphael, use your brain and calculate and show me how the 24 hour clock is based on the number 19. Let's see if you could figure it out. <laughs> mm, I'd have to think about it. I, I, do you know what I've asked um, maybe in the last last um, 10, 15 years or 20 years? Uh, yeah, in 20 years, I have probably asked a thousand people. Not one person has been able to reply to me. Well, definitely not immediately. I'd have to come no, back with something. Don't worry about it, Raphael. That's in my new book. Yes. Um, how these people, not just the calendar, like um, you know, like you pointed out that the moon, yes, um, that the calendar and the moon and the 19 months of um, 19 years for the sun, the moon, the 33. Yes, but um, the biggest shock will be if people found out that the clock that they're using and everything else is based on the number 19. Then soon you'll think these people have gone too far. The entire calendar that we're told is the solar calendar is based on the number 19. Did you know this? <laughs> the, when you, you know, if you, it's like it's all in this new book. Yes, I'm laughing because it's crazy. Yes, it's crazy what these people have done. Of course, they're going to say God did it or they were inspired by God to do all these things. Yeah. Oh, uh, but by the way, Raphael, just in case, you know, these peasants don't realize um, oh, when I'm saying, um, you know, um, God did it. Yes, I'm um, just to make things clear. Yes, I think the peasants should know that, um, you know, when the new world order takes over, they will soon find out who is the Lord God the Pope, Papa. Yes, yeah, so um, you can wave at Papa. <laughs> I love this picture. It's one of my favorites where he's waving. <laughs> Don't you feel like laughing when you see this? Yes, but yeah, I mean. It's one of my favorite pictures, yes. So the thing is, you know, Daddy says hello to everybody. And the thing is, um, um, what do you call it? It's like there's many Muslims, they can't answer. So um, the thing is, um. Um, and the Christians can't answer, but the, the difference is there is no oral Bible. But um, the thing is, for example, um, there's many videos Muslims and Christians are making, just fighting each other, and both sides can't answer. Muslim can't answer, Christians can't answer this, that, that it, who is the Quran talking about, who is he, who is we, this, that, all of these things, and um, he or Jehovah, who is Yahweh, who is Jehovah, all these things. It's in this new book. So that's why this new book is, um, what you call it, yes, is very important. It's like, it explains a lot of things that the other 20 books didn't, and what I didn't say in the videos. I left it out because I thought I'm going to wait to put it together. So finally, I put it together in the book. I found time over Christmas, I, I wrote it. You know, I had a, a lot of time then. 
Um, so um, the thing is, that's what this book is. It's got the mark of the beast. People are dying to know. It um, explains those things. So that's what this new book is. Yes. Any questions, Raphael? I think um, I've wrapped it up. Yes. Yes. Perfect. Well, thank you, David. Made things clear. Oh, just in case, you know, we've got some brain boxes. Yeah. Who are trying to say, no, they printed millions of books. Here is something for them to um, figure out. Or is that too easy? It's a bit easy, but um, yeah, it's printed, but it's backwards. They can read it. Let me just find something that's more like manuscript handwriting. That's um, really backwards because some of these, you know, idiots and things, they're trying to say they can do it, you know, and they're saying, no, I can, um, we printed all these things. Then you know what? You know what? Go and make your own printing press, these wooden machines and whatever. <laughs> yeah. no, just print and one then, Bible in small print, you know, and that's all. Just not one. one Bible, millions of books with all these pages and these so-called New York tribunes. Here is, a, is another tribune. What's the date on this? No, I'm just Let's saying I want to have documentation of someone printing just one of those, you know. So Yeah, and they're going to tell us this is the truth. The Sunday Courier, Captain Jerry on the free rider or whatever remarkable de development of crime. It's just a lie. Yeah, that they're trying to show us that um, the people in Europe and America were already Christians. That's why in this newspaper, look at this. And the thing is so small, they did it with their hand backwards and everything. Yeah, they did the big printing books with the bigger letters, quite a lot of them. Yes, but these small newspapers, millions of pages of them, and books with the millions of pages with small writing, it's all a lie. It's all a lie. Yeah? If you think you could do it, go and do it yourself. Yes? Go and do it yourself. I'm not going to believe it, and if anybody wants to believe it, they can do. The oldest writing, I'm sticking to it, was human handwriting, which was backwards, because humans normally start from right to left using their right hand. People normally do that. I don't know why all over the world children are drawing on walls. It's been tested and it's seen. Yes, so that writing, which was natural, was what we call the original Arabic. Yes, and then the original Arabic, it's like um, there's going to be many people out there who are claiming, ah, yeah, it's whatever this, that. Um, it's not what they think it is. Like, for example, I'm going to read some Hebrew to you. It's like, um, I saved this verse because it's very good. And um, I found um, the equivalent in Arabic. It's like um, many of the words are actually found in Arabic. Yeah. And uh, I tested this. Um, I, I spoke to some Muslims and at least, um, just last week. Um, so the thing is, here is a verse in the Bible. Yes. So for me, it's very good because it turns around and talks about the children of Israel. Um, this is um, a verse in the Bible, Deuteronomy. And um, what does it say? You could read the left-hand column about the children of Israel. So all the peoples of the earth will see that you are called by the name of the Lord and they will be afraid of you. So that's what it says there. So now the thing is, I know these Hebrew words and I found that if there's any Muslim viewers, they're going to know, oh my God, David's um, uh, um, a genius. And if there's any Jewish viewers, they'll think he's a genius. Yeah. Now the word, the first word says "kul." Yes. Now the uh, now that word they've translated is is the whole or all. Yes. So um, "kul" actually yeah means uh, um, um, could mean um, to say in a um, modern Arabic, or it could also mean call. Yes, "kul" say or call. That's why many Muslims pray with the word "kul" say or call. English word "call" is exactly the same in Arabic. And then what do you call it? It says all the people. So what do you call it? So the word um, there in Hebrew, in modern Hebrew, or the transliteration, they put it as Ammi. Yes, so the Muslims will say Ummah. Yes, means all the people. And then, um, of course, they put it there like the newspaper name, Haretz. Yeah, Haretz. Yeah, or Arts. Yes, and the European word is Earth. And the Arabic word is Arat here remove the Ashkenazi H and then you've got Aretz or Earth. You see, the Arabic word is Art and the European word is Earth. Yes, you see? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and 
and then um, the next word I've noticed it says we'll see it says ver uh, in espanol señor vamos a ver let's go see vamos a ver and then um, Spanish came from you know the original Arabic and then it says that you are called ni cura and that's what the word um, cura came from to call or cur or to read yes it says that to call proclaim or read can you see mm -hmm. yeah ni cura Quran yes cura to read yes so and um, then it says the word you know shem and many people will say hashem because of the Ashkenazi Jews the ha or shem and so modern Arabic it's isam yes your name then it says the the word uh, yeah Yahweh according to their and they're saying this is the proper name of the God of Israel but the thing is in modern in Quranic Arabic the word huwa just means he or he is it could mean mm -hmm. you know he said it or uh, which guy said it he said it not him he <laughs> said it so it could be anybody you see so now i've just shown that it's actually the same like arabic but it's modified to sound different it's same like um snoop dog singing or something yes that um the thing is we can't find classical hebrew documents or anything they're saying the classical hebrew has only been discovered in the 19th century and that's full of 19 19 19 19 19 19 19 paleo hebrew like the roman thing 19 19 19 19 it's just a joke yes so if anybody wants to understand and know the full history it, it, um the thing is um, about this 19, especially anyway, yes, um, an important thing is, you know, the book Napoleon didn't exist, shows that that um, these newspapers are just fake. They're just fake. And I'm going to say to you again, even after the last whatever, I saw the last video, some, some dumb uh, idiots turn around saying Paleo Hebrew. Show me your Paleo Hebrew now. Oh, yeah. And um, what do you call it? It was all the colonial murderers who found all these things. Yeah. The Palestinians themselves have said it's a lie. Yeah. And um, uh, and they're going to say, we've got these printed books from the 19th century. Where? Yeah. Of course, the 19th century, they, um, the thing is, many of the things that happen, they mix truth with lies. Same like um, if anybody studies the war, even in Gaza. As I've, I've pointed out that many of the buildings are empty and many of the people have actually left. Yes, many people have actually left. Just in the United States, we've got a quarter of a million Palestinians. God knows how many in the European Union, Australia, Latin America. You see, it's almost like we could calculate and say, hey, where did they all come from? When did they arrive here? You see, and are they in the, they are actually in the, Palestinian authorities statistics. Oh, by the way, because some people are going to turn around and say, oh, David's talking against the Palestinians. He's, he's like the enemy. Okay. So um, what do you call it? I'm just going to show something that's totally insane. And it's actually terrifying. This is actually totally terrifying the way that they're actually telling us the data that's coming out from um, what do you call it? Gaza or anywhere else. And um, anything else that um, the thing is that both sides are working together. Let me see if I've got it. Yes, I've got it. Let me just show you. Now, this is one of the biggest jokes that I've ever seen in my entire life. Yes, the entire in my entire life of um, what do you call it? So many Muslim viewers. Yeah, I like Palestinians. Nice people. I like um, Israelis, nice people. I don't like anyone who's doing human rights abuses. But um, have a look at this, Raphael. You are going to think this is insane. So what do you call it? Yes. Um, this was an opinion poll in, in 2005. How many people were in the sample in Palestine? 1,319 Palestinians. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> they interviewed 1,319 Palestinians in 2005. So, um, on the 19th of yes. December, 20. Yeah, the, somebody's going to turn around and say, oh, was it on the 19th? I didn't check the yes. date, but there you go. Well, anyway, the, somebody's going to say, it is a Western institution. This is not by the Palestinians. We cannot trust this. Okay, then let's go to the Palestinian Authority or one of their affiliated organizations. This is the Palestinian public 
opinion poll data. Yes, from the PCPSPalestinianR.org. What? This was a this was a, um this was done by Dr. Khalil Shikagi uh, and his friend Ayub Mustafa. You can telephone them. There is their email in Palestine. If somebody says that David is telling a lie. So before we just told you about Palestine, and I, uh, we are having a look at the data from the opinion poll in 2005. They did another opinion poll, Palestinian Center for Policy and Survey Research. You can read it yourself. Well, they basically just made the same thing. I mean, they also made a study. Wait, read it from the first line. Who made the, the study? Read it yourself. This is a Palestinian public opinion poll about the first these are the results yes have you got... no you, you haven't got the next page no i do have Please. the page in front of me i can already see what it is it's just another opinion poll but supposedly made a few months earlier by the palestinians and they also have a sample size of 1300 please read it who made this it... conducted by uh, the palestinian center for policy and survey research in the west bank and gaza strip ah so they made it themselves and how many yes. people in the sample Again, exactly the same number, 1,319. Oh, are you sure? Get your glasses on, Raphael. Maybe it says 20. You know, maybe the explanation would be that the, the, ah, the Germans... No, no, the Germans, Raphael. they just took the list from the Palestinians and they went to Raphael. exactly the same people and interviewed them. Raphael, the come on. You're talking to David to be a little here. bit creative, David. Come on. Are you, are you, are you, we've got the same dad. We, our daddy already told us all these lies. Let's read about the Palestinian Authority um, Center for Pub Policy and Survey Research in the West Bank and Gaza in September 2004. How many people is the sample, Raphael? 1,319. Well, no, Raphael, this time they had 20, I'm sure. No, it's exactly the same number. But Have that's, you got your that's glasses what on? Yes, but that's what I'm saying. The only plausible explanation would be if they copied the list from the other study. But I'm not sure they're claiming that. Ah, anyway. oh, you think so? Okay. So now before we had a look at Conrad and his and the Palestinian survey in 2005, let's have a look at the survey of 2003. All right. How many people? So here we have an opinion poll in 2003 and okay wow but they made it like every year or what okay um they again I mean, have a representative sample of exactly 1319 palestinians excuse me okay so now let's go to the middle east institute in america who is um looking out for the palestinians and they're doing um you know, they look at the research for the U.S. government. And um, the thing is, they're in Washington, D.C. And um, what do you call it? Um, um, let me just... Um, do you know what my, my guess would be by now? These studies... You get guesses! No, I but were these studies even people. conducted if they all have the same data? No, they, no, no, they no, no, just no, made no. It up? Here is the answer. Completely. Um, the Middle East Institute for American Policy Affairs in Washington, D.C. What's their address? 1319 18th Street Northwest. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Wait a minute. Are you trying to tell me that they just used the they just looked at the door? And <laughs> what? No, no, please, no, what? Stop. Okay, wait, here is the American University. <laughs> People are going to university and studying this crap. They're studying this bullshit. So at that time, yes. Now the Middle East Institute has moved, but where was it located? Read the address again. In 1319 18th Street, Northwest. 1003. You mean to tell me, Raphael, that one of daddy's friends, yes, was so lazy and he said, just put the door number <laughs> of how many people we interviewed. We didn't interview anybody at all. And how many millions did they get in funding for it? Oh, my God. That's a good... Uh, and then yeah. how many people are believing all this crap? Yeah, and how much money can they make with the survey results? Yes, yes. Raphael, it's like, um, what do you call it? Yes, you know, these jobs, they're all fake. Many directors, people who are working in institutes uh, and um, government agencies, they're not doing anything. Do you, are you beginning to see now? They're yeah. really not working. They're just inventing the data. By the way, 
if people want to know, many people didn't um, who have not read this book and they're listening, don't comment, just get lost. I've told you to go away. It's because if they've not read it, they won't know. In the book, Israel and Palestine, I go through it that the entire conflict, they're controlling both sides. Or how can the Palestinian Authority publish data? Yes, that's at the American Institute and they're just using the address number. Yes. What was that address number? I forgot myself. One thirteen nineteen. Yes. Okay. So now uh, I'm sure I'm sure I've mentioned this to you before. Have we not mentioned this before? No. This example, no, no. Oh my God! You mean you didn't know that that it's like um what do you call it? Yes. Let's say we're at the building and the address is 130 Vienna Street, and we've set up an agency in um what do you call it? Let's say there's a war on in North Korea. And they say, how many people died today? The address is 120. Just say 120 and say, and say, um, what do you call it? Yes. Um, what do you call it? How old are you, Raphael? 130 or what do you want me to say now? Oh, how old are you? Your age? <laughs> 34. 34. Okay, tomorrow 34 people died. Yes. Just put it on the headlines of the newspaper. You see? Yes. Okay, now let's go through more. So this is in my Israel or Palestine book. This is not a joke. This is deadly serious. Now, I want you to read this, that in, in, um, in 2021 was the last Gaza war when Israel bombed the hell out of Gaza for, for, uh, and we were seeing this on television. Yes. So now let's have a look at this. This is the Israeli police, not the um, Palestinian Authority. How many people did the Israeli police, um, you know, arrest? Police have arrested 1,319 suspects. You mean they arrested... Oh, but don't worry. But don't worry. I didn't even read the date. Of course, it happened yeah. in 2021, May 19th. Oh. Uh, I'll carry on reading. And what does the next thing say? And the next thing is also 2021 about democratic voters are divided on something about no, not Biden. That. Yes. Uh, uh, you read it from what I've written, it's easier, but... Right, but they also said that 1,319 people were interviewed in America after 19th of May 2021. These 1,319 were asked about America's relationship with Israel. Wow, so ah. they even used the same well, number for Americans. Then, I mean, what is this? In America, yes, and the Palestinian Authority is using it. I told you. <laughs> what is this? It's a big joke. You see, oh democratic God. voters are divided on whether Biden should support Israel or not, or reassess the relationship. Are you beginning to see how much of a joke this is? It's incredible, yes? and it's incredible okay, nobody so noticed now, so in far. In 2018, there was a Palestinian conflict with israel so now israel kidnapped or uh, or arrested um, so many palestinians so what do you call it the idf this time they declared and it was on world news the palestinian information center confirmed it so did the the israeli news you know who they control their media how many people did they um what do you call it arrest in 2018 1319 uh, Raphael, get your glasses on. You said they arrested that many people in 2021. How many did they arrest? 1,319. I'm getting confused here. Yeah, am me I too. really talking to you or am I talking to a robot? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Raphael, is that you or is this a robot? <laughs> yes, that's what people were asking it's about you already, David. <laughs> It's a we're, robot. We're the, we're the most advanced artificial intelligence there is. No, this is ah, ridiculous. They're using so the same number everywhere. Ah, okay, no, so now we've got the current conflict, 2023. Yes? So now, um, last year, during the conflict, how many, how many Palestinians did the IDF arrest and keep them in detention or kidnap? Yeah, you know, 1, they kidnapped 319. People. Oh, please. I, I don't I even I'm have, not I'm not even looking at it anymore. I didn't even look at it anymore. I'm yeah. not talking about 2021 <laughs> or 2018. Yes. Please read it. 
Are you sure? <laughs> November 7th, 2023, 1,319 Palestinians in detention by the F since October 7th. So this is the most recent conflict. And again, <laughs> they, they collect... Look, David, maybe they just have a quota in the... No, I mean, there is no explanation for this anymore. No, yeah, no there is. is an explanation. I, I'm telling you what I mean, it is. I mean, of course what there is. They will use they, the number they will... 19. <laughs> yes, of I'm course. I'm going to explain to you. It's like, uh, I'll explain part of it. The other part is in my new book. One... They're using the number 19 and they used it on purpose. And then they thought, hey, the number 19 is on the door of the building. So the Middle East Institute, the X address. Yeah, they just thought that this is the address of the Middle East Institute in Washington, D.C. that the American government uses. Yes, we'll just put the door number and no one's going to find out. And nobody did find out yeah. and nobody does know in the world. Probably I'm the only person who's ever mentioned it. So both sides, the Palestinian Authority, the American Institute, everybody, they're all lying to you. And the thing is, with these lies, I bet you're just sat there, you know, pizzas, having your beer or something later, or just going to bed after. They're, go they're taking over the world and you are all going to be under control, owning nothing. They're putting all these, you know, injectionations in the food and everything and they're taking over and the thing is i found out about the 19 i just read the quran that's all i found out when i was young yes and then of course i was lucky i knew many of the things but but the palestine thing i told people in the beginning you won't be able to change a single thing jumping up and down with the flags you didn't achieve a single thing you think that there's um what do you call it refugees and whatever maybe egypt will help or whatever the bankers, this, that, everything. It's all in the book, Israel or Palestine. I saw some some of these donkeys and dogs commenting and saying, oh, David, this, that, he's standing up for them. No, I'm not. It's because you're not going to solve the problems of the world because you don't know who's running the show or why. You don't know why they're using this mathematics. Why does it have to be 19? And who are these people? You don't even know who they are or anything. Am I, am I, uh, am I not shocking you with the... Raphael, has anybody ever in the world ever told you this information? No. Do you think anybody else is ever going to come out with it? No, that's why we're doing these interviews, David. Yeah. So that's why I've turned around and said, from all the other books, this new book, Secrets of the Kabbalah, it explains the 19. And sorry, yes, maybe it's expensive, but the, but the, this information is, is, is um, what do you call it? It costs me an arm and a leg. Believing in lies is much more expensive, David. Uh, nobody knows this information anyway. Nobody in the world would have known about the thing. Oh, they're putting the 19 in the ancient Romans. It's in the ancient Paleo-Hebrew. The 19 is in the, what do you call it, in the Israel-Palestine conflict. It's in Napoleon. It's in Hitler. This is no joke. Some of, the, some of you people are just listening to videos and watching it and thinking it's a joke when half the world is starving and half the world's people are going through a headache. Yeah, there's bad things going on in Gaza, but this Middle East conflict, yeah, people are forgetting in the 80s it was in Lebanon. Maybe they're going to send it back there because the thing is they want the entire region like the United States of America. And they're going to take the entire Middle East. Oh, these Muslims, they won't listen anyway. They've got their Quran and they're still not realizing that this entire thing is against them. Yes. Oh, many of them have come to Europe and America, and now they don't even memorize the Quran or even read what it says, many of them. Yeah. Oh, there's many non-Muslims who are just commenting and saying, oh, why is he mentioning the Quran, 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 Quran? They've not even read it, these guys. Yeah, you know what I mean? And they don't even know what it's about. The, many of these people haven't even read my books. Yes, there is something else going on. Yeah. And the thing is, uh, uh, many people are thinking Israel or the Jews are behind it. The Quran doesn't say um, the Jews of today. It says these Jews have taken Uzair or Osiris as the son of God. Who are these Jews? So the Muslims are even looking in the wrong direction. Yes, um, that I pointed out in my book, Matrix Codes. Yes, and then the final thing to actually understand um, the 19 and these other things of um, what these people's policy are, how they think and everything is in the book, Secrets of Kabbalah. I think uh, I, I, I think that's enough for today. Or is there any questions, Raphael? I think that's it. Thank you, David. 
Yeah, and thank you to all the people who've been genuinely nice and to other people who've got their agendas. I don't know who you are. I've told you to get lost. Uh, you know what I mean. And because you're disturbing other people because other people come back. I've got my groups, there's thousands of followers. And um, the thing is, many people, it's confusing them and it's hurting them. So the thing is, I don't know why you um, put these stupid things on because you believe in something in history. Yes, in official history. Sorry, official history is a lie. Yes, I'm very sorry for you all, but it's actually a lie. And to the people who've been grateful, yeah, it's been a nightmare learning all this information. Well, I enjoyed it. A nightmare sometimes, it's difficult. It cost an arm and a leg, I'm not going to lie. Yeah, I gave 20 books free um, when they first came out in the promotion. Sorry, this book's not free. Yes, the thing is, um, you know, I've... Um, my books are in 30 languages. Do people think it was free for me to organize the books in the Japanese language? I've got people from Japan just harassing me. David, get this book. I want this book. I want this book. I've got people in Iran who are harassing me, um, saying, hey, I want your latest book in Farsi. I've got people in Vietnam who harassed me the other day. They want the thing. Do they think Google Translate could do Japanese? Go and do it yourself and see if you could do it. So the thing is, many of these things are actually... You know, I, um, a lot of the things actually cost me a lot of money as well, believe it or not. So so, uh, uh, so some of these people are talking. You know, they've got no right to talk. Yes, and not just me, just learning all these years, the expenses all these years. Yeah, this is the first book after 20 that I've charged for on its release. Yeah, and the price is high because I challenge you to see if anybody else ever came with all this information that I came with. Raphael, just tell me, has anyone else ever come out with it? No. And I've told everybody I'm just a simple idiot. I classify myself as an idiot. I've not said I'm divine or anything or I'm prophetic or anything. I've said no. I shared a lot of information free. When you shared the information, I'm just going to ask you again. Yes, before you charge for the videos in the last four years, did anyone give you one penny or one cent or one dollar? Well, to be exact, two individuals did, and so I invited them to, you know, get the future videos for free if they want. But that, no, that's no, I'm talking about uh, two individuals. Yes. You mean out of the thousands who are watching? Uh, people think it's just a YouTube count. I upload them directly, upload them onto Facebook, into groups and other things, and there's um, hundreds of, of viewers in them. So there's actually uh, per video, it's like um. Within, a, within like two or three months, there's like 10,000 people watching. And the thing is, I didn't, I didn't see anybody, um, you know, two people, did you say in five years, Raphael? I mean, what a shame no, on no, 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 look, let's not exaggerate. We, we made videos by then consistently for, for a few months. You had asked a few times and just from you asking, there were two Raphael, individuals contributing. Two people, two people, it's ridiculous, sorry. Ah, uh, are you siding with the peasants right now? Yeah, go and be with the peasants. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not having it. Two people out of 10,000 per video. Forget it. Forget it. Two people. And then, um, what do you call it? Yes. Um, uh, um, the first video you put it at, at um, what do you call it? Um, <clears throat> how much? Five English pounds, seven euros. People complained. And um, uh, uh, not, not many people. How many people paid for it? Five or ten? Something like that? Mm -hmm. Or even less? I forgot. How many people paid? Something like that. I would have to look it yes. up. Yes. So that's why the next video, you were generous. I, t I turned around and told you, put it at two euros. It was something like four or five people paid. So that's why um, for the videos, now you made it a ridiculous whatever. Yes. I don't now, think it's, is, it's not, it's still not ridiculous. And people actually get it cheap through membership. They get five videos yeah, extra membership. or something. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm saying the thing is, it could have been two euros, but the people were so evil. They didn't even want to pay two euros. They didn't even want to pay. They just want the information free. Then they'll put some comments from their backside. And then they'll say, I wrote this message to David. He doesn't reply. Do they know I get hundreds of messages a month? Do they think I'm their dog? I'm going to no, be writing out David, you're message? their secretary. But also, let me take this opportunity to anybody you know listening how hard it is? and supporting. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. It is highly appreciated. You know, no, um, I don't mind but, about the nice people. I'm yes, talking about I know. Some people. I know. Do you know what? Do you know what one person turned around and wrote? He turned and said, "Oh, you're not replying because you don't know." Do you? Does he know how tired I am and how many sentences I have to write out? 
that you answer one question, then they ask you another, then they ask you another. And then I've actually got um, so, um, my family um, have some trade. I don't want to mention it. And then there's some work there. I've told them to reply to people as well, because I just got 500 messages <laughs> on Monday. No, I told them to do it. And they said, my pleasure. Yes, of course. They um, It's because they're working with for our family so it's something else so um <clears throat> and they turn around and said the ridiculous whatever's and things comments they get so it's like um the thing is they even get them so um the thing is i'm being serious many people just expect me to you know what, what happens when i get these messages i try to think oh god how am i going to answer this one there's a few a few people who become my friends so i try to answer them but the other people they just like they're not even friendly they do they don't even say hello sometimes they don't say thank you for a book <laughs> And they say, hey, David, i got a question. Hey, David, this, that, long questions or whatever. They took free books, like 20 books when the promotional period was there. And it's so evil, Raphael. You've got no idea. You have got no idea how ungrateful some of these people are. <clears throat> yes? So the yeah. thing is, it's not about the ungrateful. The one thing that I felt for is that I, I felt sorry for many people. But I'm thinking, why should I feel sorry for these people anyway? Why? It's like... Um, yeah i yeah. think daddy was right i mean daddy these are philosophical right. questions no and, I've and got also, an answer for that. daddy's yes. right that we're born to rule we've got um royal blood Raphael. don't forget that oh well <laughs> you know these peasants <laughs> i i'm joking i'm joking i wish everybody have a nice day and the thing is yeah you know of course there's hundreds of people leaving pathetic messages and they Oh, you don't even know how many people in the groups that there are asking me, sending messages. Oof, there's a long queue. Don't even bother to look at them. <laughs> yeah. What else can I say? Any well, other, you know, any questions other, other you channels know? make it very simple, David. You know that, right? They just only answer any questions if people donated money. That's the real way how many channels operate, just to let everybody know. Yeah, so. Yeah. I have a, do you know what? I didn't set up a PayPal or anything. Yeah. I, I can't be bothered. But the thing is, it's like my latest book is expensive because it's got very big information. That's all I can say. Yeah, I that's it. Know. Thank you, yes. David. Thanks for putting it all yeah. together and sharing some of it with us today.